Hello everybody, and welcome to this year's Game of the Year discussion-y talk about this year thing that we do sometimes. It's super organised! Yeah, we're actually doing it at the end of the year this time, as opposed to, um, well, what was it, March? That we did it last time? Holy shit, you're right, this is actually still 2016, isn't it? Yeah, for like yeah, one more day. it is! Wow! Yeah, that's efficient. <laughs> wow. Exceptionally efficient. So, I thought we could start with uh, just going through the events quickly, the, the significance, and then we'll talk about the games, because otherwise we'll end up getting lost. Yes, because I have as always, it was an event start, for year. I have an event that we can start with. Got him. Nearly a whole year has passed. <laughs> oh. That's less of an event and more of a sort of thing that just happens every year. Well, but... on how many... You consider it an event. <laughs> on on how many layers of uh, <laughs> layers of events are you guys? Mountains. You are like babies. <laughs> okay, so um, there was loads and loads and loads of things that happened this year in gaming. Um... Most of which we're going to completely ignore. But there's a couple of big ones that we wanted to talk about. The first one being the GOGs launching their games and development uh, like plan, which is basically them pissing all over Steam's green light garbage. <laughs> them basically it's going like, good old games for new games. It's like uh, green light, only they heavily monitor and uh, assess what games they want to put in. Yeah. So only a few games get into it. Yeah, and it's Don't you mean it's well. like green light? Don't you mean it's like green light, but there's also a red light, which we will give to shit. <laughs> which is, you know, not on Steam, where it's everything is green lit. Yeah, I mean, Steam is basically the gaming equivalent of a big shithole, and everybody keeps shitting in it, and it just gets bigger and horribler and smellier. And then GOG <laughs> comes along with this beautiful porcelain throne of gloriousness. Oh. And everyone likes that one instead. Um, the the biggest thing I like about it though is the fact that it, the early access function allows the users to roll back to earlier versions should they want to, and, and have... they don't have to update it. They don't want exactly, to either. Exactly, exactly. And I believe they can get their money back if it all goes tits up. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now that Steam has refunds, which was that this year? Was... Yeah, no. No, it wasn't. Okay. Just just checking because that was major. Yeah, um, and that was only two hours as well. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, GOG's had its refund thing in place for ages anyway. But the fact that you can always do that is really nice, and it again, it just weaves all over Steam's like version of that, which is great. Yeah. When you think about it, it's actually pretty insane that you can buy an early access title that is literally being advertised as a game that is not finished and is going to, you know, get massive changes over the course of it being finished. And after two hours of playing it, you can't refund it anymore, or after two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, you get the early access game, you're like, okay, I guess this is all right. Then they release, like, a couple of updates over a course of uh, six months, and then they don't update the game ever again. Exactly, exactly. They basically that. just go, like, you're fucked. And Steam is like, oh, well, not our yeah. problem. And how often does that, and that happens fairly often. You see a lot of, um, like, early access games going, like, getting horrible. I mean, what's that, yep. what's that game that the Yogs cast crapped on everybody after their shitty Kickstarter failed horribly? Was it Tug? Oh, I don't know. Tug, I think it's called. Yeah, uh, Tug. Yeah, yeah, and that has not recently gone into like early access. It's so, like and a free to play thing, that, and it's it wasn't early play. access. So all those poor souls you, uh, was silly enough to kickstart the Yogg's Cast garbage, then got yep. dumped on a game that is now free to play, and you, and you the... still can't get your money back on that because of the way that Steam does its um, its refund. This is, by the way, one of the worst things that some early access games have been doing, even some bigger ones, is that. Like, they're giving you a roadmap about what is supposed to be in the release version, right? That's what they're advertising the whole time. And then they suddenly realize, shit, we're kind of not able to do this. But they still turn the game into the so-called release. And they officially release it. And, you know, like, it gets put up on Steam again under with the store page. And it's going to show up under new releases, blah, blah, blah. And they just remove the roadmap they showed before. Yeah, it's horrible. And... And you're basically just buying like a half done game that they're saying is released. For me, the biggest um, offender for that one was actually Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade, which uh, I was actually looking forward to being the game that they advertised it. And suddenly they went, hey, the game is released now. And I look at it and I go like, oh, that's cool. And I look at all the things that are in it. I'm like, this is not even a quarter of what you I wanted to do. I want to mention another game that I played quite a fair bit of in the time, but... Um did a similar thing, and that was Mech Warrior Online, where oh, um, yeah. the one of the, their things went, uh, hey, we've released, and it's like, so you mean you've removed the word beta? That's all they did. Mm -hmm. They didn't change anything else, they just removed the word beta. Yeah, their, their version of, like, their version, like, B 1.0 turns, turns into release 1.0, and it's just like, and you haven't actually changed anything, it's, it's bad. Early access Dude. is a good idea in principle, however, I've always been a bit wary. I, I think it's, uh, 
especially with Steam's early access functions, is, is just risky. You're essentially throwing your money into a pot and hoping for the best, and you sh normally know you're what you're going in for with that kind of thing. They, a lot of them do tell you. However, what I'm less impressed about, again, especially with Steam's rather than GOG's new one, which doesn't this doesn't happen on, is that you can put the money into the pot, and they develop it for ages, 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 and then they go, now it's going to be free to play. And you're like, hang on. Oh, but don't forget, you're going to get some of the some of the the real money currency, and and maybe a mo one month subscription for for having bought. Yeah, exactly. Games. And you get a wallpaper of like the developer's ass. <laughs> Wonderful. No, you're going to get a badge that has like a tiny like beta symbol on it. Yes, yeah, exactly. On, that you can put in your, your avatar in game. Like, yeah. So that all the people know that you're foolish enough to pay money for this crap. Anyway, oh, we're well. getting too sidetracked. We, we digress. Yes, we <laughs> we we get sidetracked very easily. But GOG launching the games development thing is really nice, actually. It's uh, it, that was that was a good function, and it's still going well from what I gather. Um, hmm. I mean, I I know that I think RimWorld uses it as well, for example. Like, I think so. And yeah. you can get you can get the version of RimWorld you wanted and stuff. Anyway, the next big thing happened um in February, which is where Game Trailers snuffed it, which yeah, is a real shame. Game Trailers, ah. game trailers, game trailers was owned by MTV, wasn't it? They couldn't adapt to the times. Maybe. Yeah, they, they well, just well, couldn't adapt how things were changing. Yeah, I guess not at all. I always loved game trailers, though. I remember it's like great. that we all we used to link each other so many stuff. Like, hey, have you seen like on game trailers? There's this and this well, and not, this and this. Well, not only that, think about what started with game trailers. You got ScrewAttack.com who did all their stuff for game trailers. You got the like, Angry Video Game Nerd. Yeah. All those years ago, did game trailers. You had like yep. um, you had tons of different types of video. The MythBusters things they did on there. And of course, not to forget the great game trailers reviews for new games that were actually always really well done. They were actually, yeah. No, no, uh, yeah. no, no sarcasm even needed here. Like they were actually pretty yeah. decent. Uh, there yeah, was, they a, there they was a showed few, a lot of stuff. There was a few iffy ones. I remember scoffing at the near review. I think they said the music was garbage. <laughs> which, uh, if there's ever uh -oh. a game to be wrong on for that one, <laughs> uh -oh. it's the game that gets like five soundtrack CDs released and a few awards given to it. But anyway, it was a shame to lose game trailers. Um, but luckily, they reborn themselves as easy allies for the for yeah. content purposes. Well, I guess I mean the side itself, the the actual game traders parts. Obviously well, the, the, did the, not, the game traders the, staff, which are yeah. all essentially the same, moved to another yeah, yeah, place. Yeah, they stayed the same. Yeah, yeah. and and then they're doing system is great. different stuff now. Yeah, yeah, they're and doing like a different kind of stuff. They are, like, but they're doing they, all their reviews and so on. Their reviews are just as good as they were, I think, personally. Yeah. So yeah. while we lost game traders as a name and a lot of the content it had, which is a real shame, we still we still kept the review format and standard and a few of the videos they liked to do, which was nice. Yeah, which is very nice. Yeah. Um, what was next on our list of things that sort of happened? That would be Lionhead Studios. Oh man, Lionhead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> how how many? It is, uh... it is gone. How, how many layers <laughs> how many of layers bankruptcy are you on? Are you on? Mountainous. <laughs> yeah, Lionhead going was surprising actually. Though I thought they would cancel Fable for a long time. I remember saying to you guys that they would do that. Yeah, it was pretty much on the wall that that wasn't going to come out after a while. Yeah. That, uh, delay, Fable delay, game. delay, delay. A free-to-play game that no one asked for, that nobody wanted, and a really weird format that was easy to play mob cheaper MOBA games online and not yep. console exclusive. It... Don't, don't forget, the Fable Rail Shooter. Oh, Fable <sighs> the Journey. Or well. Connect. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy how a powerhouse... IP like Fable literally just petered it's, off. It does and die. It's bizarre. It doesn't. Yeah, sorry. It doesn't take many wrong steps for a big um, game series to go really badly wrong. I don't even think yeah. it was that though. Like Fable: The Journey was a misstep, sure. Um, and the Fable Legends, or well, as we know, hold that worked out. But maybe mm. Fables one, two, three, they were you know they were all decent. They were. It's a weird. It's a really weird one because Fable. I mean, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it. But they're, let's be honest, they're not the best games in the world, are they? No. They're they're fun. They're colourful. And they have a sense of humour, which is probably more important than the fact they're actually decent. That's how you make a blade. Exactly, exactly. And we've all played them. We've all mucked around with them over the years. We've probably all between us have played all three, I guess. I haven't played three. Ah, okay, but I've you played one, played and, one two. and two. Yeah. I've seen three. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with them. And yeah, and I agree with like like Kleiker here. It's, it's essentially is a powerhouse IP for Microsoft. Having it then cancelled was surprising i mean it was so close to completion they must have looked and went no one's gonna play this like it's just gonna be a black hole of money but to lose lionhead completely strange it just gone strange just gone i knew peter molyneux gone but uh peter molyneux wasn't the only employee at Lionhead. that's the thing i mean fable like fable may have been like he may have contributed quite a lot to the first one but after that i mean a lot of the work wasn't done just by him 
And also, to be fair, if you means... ask him, he will probably tell you he coded all of that by probably, himself. Yeah, it probably but... means no um, black and white three either. No, no well, chance of that anymore. Well, the thing is, the IPs much. aren't gone. That's the thing. Like, but where, but where are the IPs locked? My, yeah, Microsoft owns all of them. My, as far I'm as I'm aware, sure Microsoft do, yeah. owns absolutely everything, which is pretty standard for. Um, yeah, but for, are they like, ever going to do anything with them now without Lionhead? Yeah, guaranteed. I think uh, the Fable isn't dead. Not a chance. The, the Fable might be resting for a while, but it's not dead. Twenty, 20 years later, Fable isn't dead. It's <laughs> it's coming back. I mean, think about do it. You, you got remember? An, you got this RPG series that you know that a lot of people do like and does sell pretty well. It hasn't had an RPG version of itself released in a long time. You had a misfire with, uh, with the journey. You had a misfire with Legends. You need to give it some time to let public opinion on those disappear, I'd reckon. And also need to be in a time where those kind of games are actually kind of sought after again, yeah. which I think right now is probably not the time. Oh, to be honest, are you going to fight the PS4's like, like, supremacy and lead with your own Western RPG at this point? Probably not. Why not just leave it, launch a new machine in a few years' time, and maybe lead it in with a Fable or something like that, you know? You can call it the Xbox Fable with a built-in <laughs> Fable it's a, it's got a built in acorn game. that grows when you play. <laughs> in real time. In real time, yeah. Watch it grow! Your, your, console, your console will turn into a dog, and the dog will show you secrets, <laughs> and he will be like your best friend, and then Peter Molyneux comes out of the console and he says, congratulations, Shinji. <laughs> oh, we, we have to constantly... We have to constantly <laughs> remind him that uh, Peter Molyneux is not uh, Clyke's friend. Yeah, yeah that's true. Not. He's never going to come round. You can do anything. You can't do it. Um, the other big oh. thing of the year, like I said, there is a lot of stuff going on, but we're just massively <laughs> skipping over stuff. But it's, it's like VR. Disney closing down first uh, party publishing. That was weird. Completely. Yeah, that was. That weird. was weird. Just like, by the way, <laughs> we're out. Yeah, that's strange. Yep. But v VR, VR coming out, which uh, VR, I haven't, yes. I haven't tried personally. I know you have. I have like, tried it. Yeah. Yes, I have tried the Oculus Rift in a um, demo in a store. You were quite impressed, weren't you? <sighs> That's a it's good. Kinda like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? It's kind of like yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I was. I was impressed, I guess, by let's say it like that. I was impressed by the sense of presence that such a rubbish experience can create. It's a very diplomatic response. Uh, I guess. It's like, when you have it on, and I had it on, like, I had it on properly, it was it was proper on and so on, like, and I played this game where you're climbing on, free climbing on a wall above the ocean and so on, which is, like, one of those public demos they have. And you really, you very quickly develop a sense of being there and of being able to interact with the virtual world it's like it's it's it, it's it's really well done like the presence is definitely there but at the same time i was just kind of completely shocked actually by how such a device that literally costs 700 euros and the controllers that i was using cost like another 100 or something like that so like 800 euros how like it was so blurry. There was it was it was just not sharp in any way. It was blurry. It just was not a good resolution. It just I don't know. Like everything about it, the entire presentation of it was just not very good. And it felt flimsy. The hardware itself felt like it was made out of the cheapest plastic and it could just like fall off of my head and just you know, explode into a thousand pieces at any moment. My uh, brother-in-law um, got to experience it around Christmas time, and he uh, he didn't know at all that it wasn't um, something that um, I think was the PlayStation one he, he had. The um, yeah, He didn't know at all yeah. that it was um, not, like, packaged in with the console. And when he was informed about how much extra the VR was... A.K.A. There, an entire console worth of money. There was money. pause for thought, but this is this is all first generation. Um, yes. VR hardware. That's the a, problem. Yeah. Yes. Like I was, like I said, the sense of presence. Like I can see where the fun comes from. I can see where the possibilities are. I I felt the possibilities, but right now this hardware, these like is games that they're trying niche. to sell, jeez, for those prices. Oh, and don't forget, once you buy that thing for eight hundred, nine hundred, whatever you use, whatever you're buying, the Vive or the Rift or whatever, you also need a computer that can properly run it. It's and it, wow, <laughs> it's a very niche thing right now, and yeah. there are not a lot of people making really. De really good games for it. for every person that makes a really decent game there are a lot of games where 
you get told how much it costs and you go. Uh-oh. Yeah, those are those are the games where they're not actually games, they are experiences. Yeah, and I think at the moment it's I think it's fair to say it's more of a glorified tech demo system as as yeah. it stands. Where the yeah. few games adding things in I mean you've got things like Elite, which I imagine is absolutely phenomenal with the VR headsets. I imagine that is oh, quite an impressive yeah. sight. Like, uh, I mean, if, if yeah. I had that presence in that kind of demo, if I, I imagine, was sitting yeah. in my cockpit in the lead, then yeah. Imagine, you've got, imagine you've got the helmet on, you've got the you've got the joystick in front of you, you, you look left, you see yeah, your yeah, panels, yeah, yeah. oh, it'd be, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? One yeah. of the things... The that, immersion is there, 100%. Yeah. Sorry, can you one, of the, one of the things that, um, of course, is the, the next step is a lot of the games that are being made are inhibited by the fact that you only have so much space. Mm. And so you have the, uh, the experiences yeah. where people are using the, um, I don't know what they're called, the thing which you can run on. Treadmill? Oh, the, the treadmills. treadmills. Yeah, yeah, yes, on, on the, those, on the that would then open up people's ability to um, move around a lot more. Because a lot of things you see that's, is like that's you, true. you have to point and click or do something else, and um, it's just you, you, you do they're... actually have the problem that um, like the whole movement thing. That's like so many of those things actually use the whole teleportation mechanic, like pointing somewhere and you teleport there, because using the normal gaming movement in vr is apparently for many 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 people not only incredibly disorienting but it's actually like it makes them sick mm. yeah i think and i think that's VR, a big problem. with vr and especially the way it looks it has to run not only has to run perfectly it has to get the fv yep. done right and there can't be any hitches in it because the second that starts happening you get people vomiting all over the shoes yes Yes, uh, exactly. I, I actually felt that because I saw that the demo I was playing sometimes actually dipped down to like 45 frames because I guess they, for some reason, even though this is like them showing off the fucking thing, didn't, the didn't give machine. them proper, yeah. Yeah, they didn't give them proper demo computers, like don't ask me why, but every time it dropped like under 60 FPS, which is apparently the absolute minimum for VR. I thought 90, I, wasn't it? Like, no, I think 60 is like the absolute uh, okay. minimum for like Oculus Rift stuff. But um, like every time it dropped under that, it was like someone was messing with my brain. Yeah, and it's, it really. It's, yeah, didn't I, I, mean, I can see that. Like, thing is, it's difficult yeah. to do as well. You got if from what I gather, you have to render both screens separately, so you have to have something it, to yep. crunch that and do each yep. screen. I got to yep. be honest, though, we could we could probably talk about VR for an entire video as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna yeah. give my quick verdict from Please. having yeah. having played it. When I was using it, and after I was done. I wanted to keep using it, and if it was at a proper price, I would pick one up. Because, like, I'm I'm a, I'm an idiot like that. I will pick it up even if it's not 100% ready yet because there is some stuff I want to try out. I would have picked it up, but in no fucking way at the current prices. Yeah. The current prices are the same price I paid this year to upgrade my computer and make it future-proof for, like, the next three or four years. Yeah, it's insane. Like, that, like that... I'm not buying a fucking yeah. VR headset that's going to be obsolete next year for that. That price it's is like a huge insane. barrier, I think. Um but that's no surprise either, because I mean, new tech always has huge price barriers. That's I mean, look at 4K yes. TVs, look of at course, Blu-ray yeah. players when they came out, you know. Yeah, yeah. So give it a few years. If you people are willing to try it, then I mean, if it's of course, assume it's still kicking around then. Yeah. But hey, right. Should we crack Let's on with see. the games? I think so. I think we should. Okay, starting in January then, which I think is a good place to start. We're Pretty l- good place. Let's have a look. Right. Let's see what did I happen to play? Punch Club. Someone gave me a key for. I gave to Ollie. So he said that was. Oh good. yeah, yeah. Ollie said he was. It yeah, was he liked good, it. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. You, you need it. to go all the way to uh, January the fifteenth, I think, before oh, you find something that uh, you want to talk Dragon's about. Dragon's Dogma did, did, comes did swinging guys... in. Oof. Oh yeah, Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma. Dark, Dark, Dark Arisen. Yeah. yeah, the PC port of Dragon's Dogma was everything I could have wanted out of Dragon's it was, Dogma it was again. So good. It's perfect. Finally, more than twenty-five frames. Oh god, I mean, <laughs> I played no it. No letterbox. I played it on PS3, and it, oh, as painful it was. But yep. Dragon's Dogma is a brilliant game that deserved a second shot again. A third shot, actually, technically. Um, it's it's if you've ever played Dragon's Dogma on the consoles, the PC version is brilliant. It's smooth. It runs well. There's no load times. It has all the extra content that the Dark Arisen did originally, along yep. with all the DLC bollocks that it probably comes with. You know, and I mean, everyone knows Dragon's Dogma at this point. It's a great game. It's it's fun. Capcom basically went uh, PC players ill like bad ports <laughs> arisen. <laughs> Everything ill likes fire arisen. Mm, funny that all these creatures with fur that don't like fire. All of these living things yeah, anything are bad living. against fire. Yeah, it's right. Like, oh, okay. It's a dragon ill likes fire arisen. Stupid bastard, trying to get me killed. But yeah, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, you can get it ridiculously cheap now on PC. It's Worth a beautiful money. port. It yeah. runs so well. If you have a 360 controller or, or a DS4 or whatever, it's just 
like just get it it's such a good game like and it, with dark arisen it literally has all of the dlc in it it is a huge game and fun fact like, i made can... my uh, pawn called Kleiker, and he was a big lumbering <laughs> mage it was like Durr. yes Yes. And I threw him off river. Also, also a fun fact, the um, console version is a bit also ill like fire. <laughs> yes, funnily enough. They probably yes. cause fire more lightly. Uh. <laughs> 19th um, cracked along with a game that I play with my friend Ollie, actually, called Blade and Soul. It was an MMO. I played that too. Oh, you played it for a bit, didn't you? Yeah, you made someone I hideous. Too, yes. Yeah. I made someone ex extremely fat. And Blade ugly, and Soul yes. has an interesting combat system, and it also has ridiculously jiggly boobies. And oh, ass. Oh, yes. It's basically a, like a husbando slash waifu, or in Clive's case, ugly man simulator, which in case yes. you can punch people. It's interesting. I think the cash shop side of it and the content drip from the, uh, I believe it's Korean release. I think it's a Korean. It is. Yeah. It is a Korean grindy MMO, yes. They actually got rid of a lot of the grind, actually. In all fairness. Okay. Yeah, in all fairness, the, the, the grind was reasonably minimal. They westernized it pretty well. The story was cool. Oh, that's good. Lots of great voice acting. I was pretty impressed, actually. I mean, the only reason I didn't continue with it is because, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't have the huge amount of time for was random MMOs. Was it free MMOs. to play? Yeah, it was, it was. It's free to play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and the thing is, the, the the draw of it was, like, you can spend 10 quid on the, like, attractive dresses and all sorts of stuff, but <laughs> oh, it's cool. just, I, I, I don't know, I wasn't that interested. And truthfully, the mythology for me, the, uh, like, sort of, uh, the sort of Eastern old school mythology of Kung Fu and, um... That kind of thing wasn't super appealing. Though yeah. the, com the combat was great, but the actual world itself, I didn't like too much. Though, I imagine if you're a kung fu, like sort of Eastern martial arts movie fanatic, you'd probably like it quite a lot. It was a bit, a bit like too Asian. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. But I just, like, I certainly like, say that the, the sort of myths and legends they were using and the story yeah. was just a bit like I couldn't get invested in it because I, I, I don't, I never particularly care for those movies except for maybe like yeah. Way of the Dragon, which is just. I would have preferred film. like more Jackie Chan in a ladder factory. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Jackie Chan, and he doesn't want no trouble when he's got a kid in his He does what he wants no trouble. He's holding <laughs> a baby and he's fighting in a ladder factory. Hey, Kika, do you play New and Tasty same day? No, I haven't got round to playing it yet. Oh, same oh, day the v, by the way. Was um, one, wasn't it? Sorry, I can't remember that. Yeah. Uh, same day by the way. The official release version of the Darkest Dungeon came out oh yeah dankest dungeon yeah so Dark dankest dungeon officially came out of um early access had their proper release version they had everything in the release version which they said would be in the release version uh they have since added uh even more stuff and are actually on their way to making their first expansion which is apparently coming out in i think early 2017 yeah i mean i, I actually kickstarted darkest dungeon um, all those years back, whenever it was. I remember when you first showed me, like... Yeah, yeah, uh, I was really the, impressed. The I, 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 I like the idea of it. Um, I think on release, it was fairly good. I think there was quite a few issues I wasn't too happy with. The grindy side of the gameplay, what we discussed the other Do night. Do you mean the early access release? Or this no, well, both, actually. But the... The, you know what we were talking about the other night where I said to you about um, respecting yeah, yeah. the player's time? And I feel that yes, the... Uh, exactly, I think yeah. the release of Darkest Dungeon did not do that. The early access release absolutely didn't do it. The normal release did it a little better. But now it By is much now, improved from what I gather. It, but now yeah. it is much improved, but of course there is still stuff where you're basically going like, oh, now I have to do this again. And of course, I on mean, the same day, we have the... Uh, it's a busy day, the 19th. We have the Master of Unlocking game, of course. Resident Evil... Uh, <laughs> oh, no, oh, sorry, Resident Evil Zero. So zero. Which, was, um, zero which had some, Wesker yeah, yeah. mode in it. And uh, lovely... Yeah, what was her name? Rebecca Chambers. Rebecca Chambers. I and like also Zero. Billy, what's his name? And Billy, Billy, uh, Billy, Billy. Billy, the man who just goes, I'm not in, I'm not in the first game, so I have to go now. I'll just walk <laughs> off. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Billy. <laughs> Bye, Billy. We'll never see you again. Yeah, I, I like Zero. I, I, I have a lot of time for Zero. I've got the GameCube one. Um, I haven't picked up the HD remaster of Zero yet for reasons. I'll well, probably, maybe I'll LP it at some point, to be honest. But uh, yeah. What else, yep. we, what else are we looking at in January? Let's... What else we got in January? Are you not looking at Five Nights at Freddy's World? Oh, no. yeah. Now, wasn't Came that... out in the 21st. Now, interestingly, wasn't that the one that got he withdrew in the end for not being up to quality, right? I yeah, think so. Yeah. It was definitely not at the typical vein of the other ones. It was more like a JRPG, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. More like a parody JRPG in a sense. But I think, yeah. I think he was trying something new and it didn't work. And I believe, in all fairness, he gave everyone their money back from what I gather. If I remember right. I, I think so. I think it was just removed and refunded or something yeah. like that, yeah. Oh, interesting. In the same month, Bombshell, the Duke game that was going to be Duke Nukem, but then couldn't be. 
it came out to very, very little fanfare. And it was terrible like, reviews. Wow, I actually mentioned it to you. I said, yeah. oh, did you know this is out? And you went, no. really? Yeah. i got to be honest. Um, in fact, let me just have a quick nosy, because I think the price of it drops reasonably quickly, but... Um, Bet it did. From what I gather, they review terribly on launch, but they've done nothing but patches after patches after patches to try and get this um, up to snuff, which is really interesting. And apparently now it's actually not half bad. Like, to the point where it plays pretty well. It's an interesting, like, twin, sh twin stick shooter style thing. Another thing also came out that was uh, a day before. Uh, Tomb Raider? Number 20. Yes. Well, the PC version yeah. of Tomb Raider. Yes. The yeah, PC the PC version, version came out. Because the PS4 version was late last year, wasn't it? Yeah. But the uh, well, version. it first came the Xbox One version, which, as far as I'm aware, was exclusive for one year. Then came the PlayStation Four version, and then came the PC version. Was it really a year already? Was it? Well, was it a year? the Xbox it was One version. Yeah, the Xbox One One version, as far as I'm aware, so was Xbox exclusive one, for one the year. The Xbox 360 and One version came out in November. No, it was November. It was like two 20, months. It was exclusive 20, to X console exclusive. It must have been. Oh, okay. Yeah, because right. it came out on the PS4. I thought October. it was like a year or something. I don't know. I remember some weird control. It's about eleven months. About the that. Xbox One came out in November two thousand fifteen. The PlayStation Four October two thousand two thousand sixteen. Oh, okay. So it was console. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I just remember there was like some controversy about that. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, there's a game in February for me and Kiko there. But just before we get to that one, we have on the second Tales of Symphonia HD. Which and I thought you were going to mention Digimon Stories Cyber Sleuth. Oh, apparently, that's, apparently that's really good, and it got a it got a European release, um, an American release as well, I believe, an inboxed version too. It's supposed to be very very good, from what I've been told. Never had. It's no Mega play. Dimension Neptunia Seven, but I, here it was good. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what you were talking about there? Uh, Tales of Symphonia HD. Um, I love the Tales yeah. games. It's and that's one of the I'd say one of the more simple ones, but still much loved. It's. It's fun. Well, Tales of Symphonia is fantastic. For yeah. many people, it's their first Tales but game, But unfortunately, actually. as they always seem to, Namco do bizarre decisions, and they ported yeah. the friggin' PS2 version, which is the 30 FPS one. I have no idea why. Oh, yeah. It, well, it's because the yeah, PS2 it has version more it's like, it has more content than the GameCube Oh, I know, I know. But a little bit of extra work, they maybe could have ported the content across, who knows. But well, it, luckily we have Durante, who uh, apparently yeah, saved quite, the game. Not quite. It still isn't running 60. Uh, it's, it's running better than it did on launch, but it's still not quite 60. It's, uh, no, okay. it's it's an interesting one. That you're almost you say, you're almost better off emulating the GameCube one. Truthfully, but would you be emulating the PS2 one? No, because you'd still be at 30 frames then. Because you want to emulate the GameCube one to get the full 60 FPS. But you do but you do the emulator. Some... You can't go. No, you can't you can't use the PS2 emulator to force it at high frames. Okay. It's it's locked to the disc. Oh, interesting. I know the Dolphin can do stuff like that sometimes, but I don't believe the um, EPSX2 can. Anyway, yes, yeah, it was a decent port as far as... And to be honest, it was free to Zestaria players anyway. So, you know. Yes, that's what, true. So, whatevs, I guess. Well, then we had February the 5th. Now nah, we're missing one. Uh, for me and Kiko, Adventures of Mana for the iOS. Ah, yeah. Adventures Fuck. of Mana. Yep, fantastic game. Really, really good. It's a remake of... Uh, we call, what's it called over here? Mystic Quest for us. Mystic Quest. And what's oh, it called, yeah, what's Mystic it called Quest. in America? It's called something Final different. Fantasy Adventure. Final Fantasy Adventure for the Game Boy, which of Did course is Secret of Mana Zero, essentially. Yeah, didn't they change it into like Final Fantasy Origins or something? No, no, no. I don't know. There, there was no. A, there, they did this. No, you're thinking of the spin-off saga, which they called Final Fantasy Legend over here. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, which had nothing to do with Final Fantasy, but they just slapped the name. And on. unlike the um, <laughs> unlike the, name the one on released on the Game Boy Advance, which took a lot of um, differences with the uh, general layout of everything. Mm, yeah. This one pretty much is the Game Boy one. It's the one you love and remember, but modernized, better soundtrack, a, a bit cleaner, easier to play, essentially. And it still has man! It does still have man, and uh, it's it's just as fun as it was, honestly. And the nice thing about it is that Sword of Mana still hasn't gone anywhere, so if you want the, like, the slightly more complicated story experience, you still have Sword of Mana. I mean, if you want Dark Lord to actually have a personality, you play Sword of Mana. And Look, his well, name is Dark Lord. Honestly. That's all you have to know about it's his also personality. also in all caps in the Game Boy version. It is. It's wonderful. Of course it is. Yeah. Everyone just shouts his name, including himself. Yeah. Yep. But you're right. On the 5th, I believe we have a game we all play as well, which is XCOM 2. Yep. Ah, XCOM yes. 2. XCOM, XCOM 2 was great. Two. Uh, it, it was really good, Really yeah. good. It ran like absolute dog shit in Treacle when oh we uh, got it. Oh my god, so bad. 
I mean, go everybody off. was like, everybody was like, oh my god, this is like going to be exclusive for PC for now because at that time, you know, the console versions yeah. hadn't been announced yet, and they said they're building it for PC. And everyone was like, it's gonna look and run so great. And the game came out, and it was like, Ehh. yeah, it was just, <laughs> it was painful. But like, we all played it on launch, as far as I'm aware, and we, we all did, managed yes. to finish it without it exploding. So it was Again, fun. Also, that had crit- there was no sweater. Where were the sweaters? Yeah, no, so it punished Brett for... To, to oh, yeah. The, uh, you so he does... He does ma- also, um... We're losing civilians left and right, Commander. You've got to do something. It's so Chill. mean. One person has died. Seriously, yeah. Run. Bradford's there harping down, down at you. You're like, I've only just landed, mate. I know they're dying because they're across the other side of the map. Some snake woman's constricting a bloke over there. I can't do anything about also, it. What one also, person's I always got loved to mention... It. Go on. Sorry, I always loved it when the game was like... Okay, so you're on this side of the map. You have to get to the other side of the map. There's five houses that you have to go through. A shit ton of cover. There's about 30 aliens. Oh, by the way, did I man- did I mention you have five turns? Yeah. <laughs> like, SCOM 2 fuck! added the timer to all the missions. And I know yep. a lot of people weren't too keen. I believe one of our friends had a mod to turn it off, didn't he? But, uh, um, yes, I think so. But I don't know. I didn't mind it. I, I think... I- yeah, SCOM 1 made fluid. it too easy, because other than fucking thin men insta-critting you across the map, but apart from that, you could basically use a scout to activate a pack, pull them back yeah. into you your... Could, uh, yeah, you could turtle your way through it. Yeah, exactly. just turtle. Yeah. But, uh, do you see any cows? Where did the advent burgers come from? Oh, <laughs> shit. They're made out of snake. It is a very, very grim pos- uh, future where you think you've won, but actually you lost, and losing is Far worse than winning. Yeah. Far worse. It's like, so what's the world like? Terrible. Literally How worse. terrible? You go there, it's like, oh, this really is terrible. Genuinely yeah, bad. Yeah. Think the time, yeah. Right. All right. What do we have? So February the 9th were actually two games that I played. Yeah. Um, which is uh, Dying Light the Following, which is the uh, was a big expansion pack for the original Dying Light, made by, you know, the people who made the original Dead Island. Uh, Dying Light itself was a really, really fun, like, first person, you know, zombie Maybe adventure kind of game sick. with tons of parkour. Yeah. Made him very motion sick, <laughs> yeah. couldn't play it. <laughs> Dying Light, the following, um, Dying Light, the original Dying Light, was set in a city, in a Middle Eastern big city. The following was actually set in the outskirts of that, and you actually had a Mad Max like buggy that you would upgrade and you would drive around, and there were like some trees yeah, and shit. It was like Country Bumpkin Land or something. Yeah, it was well. It was set outside of the city. Yeah, like yeah. countryside sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and you would drive around like fucking Mad Max and run over old lady zombies nice. and so on. Um, the other game that I played was Firewatch. Um, now Firewatch was I got that on recommendation from a friend, and um, Firewatch is a game that tells a story where you have very, very, very minimal influence about how that story proceeds and you basically just walk from dialogue to dialogue and sometimes this walking can take a long time it is a very very pretty game it has a great art style i enjoyed it overall but it's not really a game it is more like kind of like a story that you can walk around in it was okay though like again it, a very pretty game had a, had a nice feeling and was very chill i think it took me like three hours or so to finish. Hmm. So you say it's a simulation of walking? Uh, I would yeah, say that so. there was some of that in there, yes. There was walking and be... simulation? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the walking was very well simulated. Oh, but so. aren't all games a simulation of some kind? Except for, like, okay. simulation games, which are a simulation of and simulation. I... Ooh. Yep. <gasps> well, I guess, uh, I guess then we have the 16th. Street Fighter... Five. Yeah, I like Street Fighter. I like fighting games. I, I really like fighting games. I picked up this on day one, and I played a lot of Street Fighter. A A Street Fighter. I liked it. I know a lot of people were like, uh, were disliking it for the no- lack of arcade mode and stuff, but um, I had no problems. I just, I mean, I, some of you probably saw I played on stream. I, I did that a fair bit. Lost a lot. Won a fair bit. You know, it was good times. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, Street Fighter, innit? Like, not a lot to say about it. it it's the fifth one. You've done a lot of Street Fighter at this point. You've probably been living <laughs> under a rock. This is like five games. Yeah. But I haven't got a yep. lot to say about it. I just I really liked it. It was good fun. Yep. But where was the Dan? The, yeah, <laughs> the no Dan. Dan. Is... No Dan. 
Dennis, Dennis gone. <sighs> I know, but it has delicious cami in it still. Britain represent. Woo. On the uh, 18th, uh, there was a game released that I actually literally bought two hours ago because. Yes, Plague Inc. Evolved, um, because my girlfriend had gotten it and we wanted to play it in co-op. Plague Inc. Evolved is just the original Plague Inc., which is, you know, like, um, what was that? I, like, based on the browser game, which I think was called, like, Pathologic or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Um, you basically, you play as a virus or a bacteria or whatever, and you try to eradicate the world. Don't you mean you play evolving. as a very immaturely named virus normally? Yes, of course. Like, like my girlfriend and I finished our plus, first co-op game with um, the bacteria Donald Trump and the virus capitalism, and we managed to kill all of humanity in a thousand nice. days. I think, so. I think me and my friends, we went with penis stank. Yes, that is also very politically motivated. <laughs> well, penis stank. Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Have you not voted for penis stank? Uh, not this month. Oh, I see. Like us skipping a game that was on the previous day. Wait, what? Oh, wait, that was not the Windows release, though, if you, that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, that's Xbox One. I thought he'd talk about it anyway. No, don't get inside. We've, we've, only, we've only got an hour. <laughs> oh, that is true. We do only have an hour. Yeah, and that's not, again, that is just like, it just came out for the Xbox. Now. He's talking about Rocket League, for people who are wondering. Rocket League has been out for years. Fun game. Get it. Super cheap. Rock football with cars. Rocket In cars. Interesting. We have a bit of drama, though, cracking up on the uh, 24th. Uh, this guy a PC, which released as a truly appalling PC port. Oh yeah, which is right, amazing, that's... really, because it's not exactly the best looking game in the world. Yeah, but what can you do? Yeah, it's impressive that they managed to make such a bad port. I am skipping. The, uh... I am skipping over this this um, F Far Cry of the year, but I I don't have a. The, uh, the uh, minor... that's, wait, that's also the console versions. Oh, just to uh, list yeah. a few things that were initial problems with uh, the PC release that uh, he's talking about: uh, persistent crashes, save file loss. Yeah, things it's... that happened, FPS yeah, drops, all sorts of stuff. Yep. I'm also skipping over Fire Emblem Fates because us dirty peasants in Europe didn't get it to like four months later. Very good game though. Um, I managed to woo my sister. Yep. Like, but then we have the 25th sounds, and the 26th, bad, I I where on the 20th, uh, 25th, a fantastic first-person shooter came out called Super Hot. Oh my God, was that February? Oh, where is the time? That was going? February. Yes. Hey, hey Super guys, Hot. have you told all your friends about how good it is? Uh, I you think I told all right of them, yes. You've got to do it. What, yeah, super? because Super Hot is absolutely fantastic. And since we were talking about this earlier, they just released Super Hot VR. And from what I've seen about that, I would love to play that because it looks amazing. Yeah, don't come crying to me when you puke in your shoes. But, but yes, Super Blech. Hot is great. And yeah, you should go and play it. Uh, my decisions here are definitely not being influenced by anything. Nope. Everyone but should I, play it. He's got money but I don't know if you'll. I don't know if you'll have no, the time, uh, though, because no, a day after Super Hot, a game came out that Mr. <laughs> Halloween has been spending a lot of hours in. Ah, we are the dwarves. Good oh, yes, the Town of Light. No, it's Stardew Valley. Yeah, I went on a mission. It was a very sensitive, important mission to try and woo all the married women in the town. And I would have gotten away with it, too, you. if it wasn't for their pesky husbands. This man farms the best. This, no does, one farms this should not does. surprise anyone that his objective is to try and woo everyone. Oh, I, you should look at my list. Like, all the girls are right at the top. And my farmer was always like Farmer Benjamin Pimp Man. It was wonderful. And I, had, like... <laughs> I, I doubt your name was Benjamin Pimp Man. <laughs> no, that is his name. I, I, I can believe that. I had some fucking chickens. I, I had some cows. Everybody would have been suspicious if Mr. Pimp Man moved into the, <laughs> it into been the amazing. settlements. Like, it would have mm. been great. I moved into town and like she was like, mm, can I build something for you? I was like, yes, you can. Build <laughs> I see me. you've been hanging out with my with my wife a lot. What was your name again? Pimp, ma'am. <laughs> well, let me show you my you mushrooms. You can almost imagine Alan Rickman saying it, Mr. Pimp, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Pimp, ma'am. Seriously, it was great. Now I have some chickens. Oh, and one of our oh, friends is currently oh. doing a run-through and he's doing all the JoJo Mark things. I keep telling him what a bad person he is, but you know, he wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I love Stardew Valley. If you haven't played it, it's basically the Harvest Moon. Uh, it looks like the SNES Harvest Moon. Much more advanced, a lot, a lot to it. Uh, there's combat in it, so it's sort of more Rune Factory-esque as well. Uh, and you can woo people. Male or female, whatever. You can woo everybody. It's great. Except for the married ones. You can't woo them yet. Press F to woo. Yeah. I will. I will. They will I'm going to have like an extra big house with a huge sofa. It'd be great. We can all watch TV together or something. <laughs> Have you, you, 
you're not going to ever have this happen. No. Have you ever realised this? But luckily, my, my happiness about Stardew Valley has been ruined by shitty Slashy Souls as it stares out from us there. The utterly ah, drivel, infinite souls. runner garbage uh, Dark Souls thing that doesn't... Shouldn't you mean the advert about. for Dark Souls 3? Yeah, well, it's shit. Let's not waste any more time on that, but garbage. What have we got cracking up in uh, in Exciting Land here? Far Cry, again, Far Cry Primal. It's the PC release. Oh yeah, that's when it came out. I never played it myself, but what I heard from Carl, it's actually really fun. Yeah. Right. So yeah, my friend, it's, she played it as well. She said it's quite decent. It's Far Cry. Yeah, yeah. it's Far Cry. I mean, didn't, if you don't know what it is at this point, you know. Well, well, to be fair, it's Far Cry, but I mean, it is a setting that you really don't play in a lot. No, that's you know, true. like the that's whole. True. I mean, that's something. But uh, did didn't you pick up uh, Witch and Hunter? I did. Nights I Revival? streamed it for a bit. It's really fun. It's very. It's got like Tim Burton music and stuff. It's great. It's, <laughs> Tim Burton. It's music. basically like a Diablo sort of e game where you've got an absolutely horrible lady as the main character, essentially. Um, it's really Jeez, it's, it's fun. terrible. It's fun. Uh, it's got a witch called Me- is it Metallica? I think her name is. I think Metallica. Yeah, yeah and she's she's a lot of fun. Metallica. Uh, yeah, Metallia, Metallica. I think it's Metallia. Probably. I think it's Metallia because they don't want to get sued, sued by the yeah. band. <laughs> but um, it's, I had a lot of fun with the Witch in the Hundred Night. I'll be honest. Yeah. Ooh, that's something that happened that um, was vaguely video gamey related. Was it? Oh. The uh, CS:GO stuff, if you remember. Oh, we should def. Oh, actually, we should definitely get to that. We'll, we should probably say that for a little bit. But yeah, the CS:GO the gambling end. stuff. Oh, was that in the March? That was. Uh... No, that was that must have been August, I think. Yeah, or something. So it must have been August, September that happened. Can't be. I think so. Yeah, well, we should get to that. But anyway, moving on. Yep. Uh, what else have we got cracking out in March here? Uh, Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight, I've been playing a bit of recently because I got gifted it. It's actually pretty decent. It's um, a Metroidvania S thing where you smack some giant woman in the boobs with a leaf. It's, it's alright. <laughs> oh, it's that game. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, and on the same day, um, Twilight Princess HD came out. A uh, really nice port oh, yeah. of Twilight Princess. There's not a lot to say about that. It's, it's Twilight Princess. It's a great game. HD! It just looks nicer. Um, it looks really pretty. Although, i got to be honest, I think emulating the GameCube one, you can probably make it look slightly better. But they have up-res the textures yeah. as well, which is nice. Um, oh. Can't complain about that. I picked it up. I had a lot of fun with it. It's it's just as I remember it, essentially. but not, not Yeah, it's still Twilight Princess. So. Hey, one for you, Clegg. Uh, Yeah, on um, March the 8th, we actually had um, Tom Clancy's The Division coming out. Which uh, I have so far put in, according to you, play 230 hours, which is actually pretty good, I'd say. And, uh, you know, what was that? March. So yeah. now we have December. That's nine months. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, how best to describe it? Well, uh, it's an RPG shooter, which means that your your character actually has stats and so on. And you don't just like, you know, like you don't just shoot someone in the head with like two bullets and they fall over, but your bullets will pop out little damage oh, wait, numbers, Destiny kind of like Borderlands. Oh, yeah, Destiny or, or Borderlands or whatever. Um, so, uh, much more RPG, though, than uh, than Destiny. Um, but yeah, I I really loved uh, the city, like the New York that they've built after a virus ravaged it and pretty much like all of the population is dead and you're fighting like for the survivors and you're fighting against, you know, like rioters and evil military people and so on and you're like this special ops unit basically um i played it with friends it's really really fun in multiplayer it had a lot of problems in the first couple of months when it came to the end game because a lot of their kind of like damage formulas weren't very well thought out there was a lot of hacking going on in the first two months um their pvp mode was kind of pretty much broken and they had the worst thing was that they released pretty quickly some high level content where you could get great items but um, people found exploits to beat them incredibly fast and the developers took a little long to patch them not super long but a little too long and they never removed the items from the people who exploited so you had kind of like this one percent cast of people who were basically unbeatable because they had the best items in the game and then you had you know the proletariat of the rest who couldn't do anything because it took yeah them i think that, weeks to get i there. know that they suffered a bit from their player base after that they definitely suffered it's it's actually the uh, in the first three months or so the um i can only talk about steam the game is also on uplay but we don't have the numbers for that i, I think it has more people on uplay because it's much cheaper to get on there but um on Steam, the player numbers dropped insanely after three after three months. Yeah. But I have to say, in the last um, in the last three months, 
uh, or two months, they released uh, some big patches. They have released the second one of their DLCs, which is for some is called Survival, which is apparently super popular. And they have gotten a huge amount of players back. They actually went from an average of 3,000 concurrent players a month to over 20,000 for the last two months. So, oh, and it's all? also, yeah, it's also back to being streamed. And yeah, it's a it's a fun game, honestly. And I think you can get the game plus the season pass for like $20 now. And you're definitely going to get, I don't know, like depending on how you play, like, probably a minimum of a hundred hours out of that game before you've done everything interesting so. point it's um it's never the case that it's always the case whenever these things like there is a virus and it has wiped everyone out it's all like there is a virus and everyone is a bit sniffly and has a cough go and distribute night nurse to everyone no everyone's <laughs> dead everyone has to be dead not a Norovirus body bags in New the York. street <clears throat> it's the japanese cold finally got out of anime oh god um, so yeah, like oh, yeah, Division was, was a big. Division, Division was a big game. Uh, Hitman came out in March as well. <laughs> Hitman. Hitman. Hit me. Hit, Hitman's really good. Uh, it's a really nice modern version of Hitman. Uh, really impressive. The they've continuously added content throughout the entire year. I really liked what I played of it. I know a friend of ours is, reckons it's his game of the year. He's played a lot of it. Enjoys it. Oh a lot. yeah, he's playing a ton of it. Yeah. 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 So that, I was impressed by Hitman. Again, not an awful lot to say. It's Hitman. You know, it's it's just what you'd expect from a new version of Hitman, really, it's good. Salt and Sanctuary came out on the 15th. That was... Uh, for PS4, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's where I played it. Uh, Salt and Sanctuary came out. Yeah, that was the first one. It is available on PC as well. Now. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's 2D Dark Souls, basically. It's pretty fun. Um, it's 2D Dark Souls in the same way that you'd imagine I'd limit its fun in certain ways as well, I'd say. Yeah. It's it's decent. Uh, the bosses are cool. The design for stuff is nice. The world is interesting, but it's the character like, models are terrible. The character models are utterly hideous. Like wow, the art style for the character models sucks. Super bad. Yep. Just put on a helmet, please. Yeah, but I mean <laughs> overall, it's 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 decent. It's a, it's what you'd imagine out of a two D fifteen pound Dark Souls. I, I thought it was pretty fun. It's um it's apparently it's pretty breakable. There is some stuff where you can build your character they in such a way that you just steamroll everything. They, they yeah. Patched oh, they patched but, it by yeah. now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I thought it was a fun game, and I think it cost like what, like I think you can get it for fifteen dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not very most, expensive. It's not an expensive game. I just but it's quick, fun. I want a quick look. Shadow Complex. It has co-op as well, by the way. It yeah, has co -op. well, no, sort of. It's like a local co-op. It's a bit weird. Yeah. Um, Shadow Complex Remastered came out on the sixteenth. Um, Shadow Complex came out donkeys years ago. Did we, did we all play that? Yeah. Fun no. Game. You didn't play Shadow Complex? Okay. It was basically. Um, it was Metroid as written by a homophobe, but um, it was... <laughs> what he is. <laughs> okay. Aw awesome Scott Card is an interesting person, let's put it that way. But anyway, yeah. um, Shadow Complex was a decent game, uh, done by Chair, I think, who now do the iOS games that look pretty pretty, but you swipe at, swipe at stuff, I can't remember what it's called. Yep. And Shadow Complex was actually, um, it came out originally on the Xbox 360, and when it came out, it was the biggest Xbox Live arcade oh, game yeah. that was ever released. And it basically kicked off Xbox Live Arcade being a place for actual big, proper games. Funny to enough, be that's on. the reason why Symphony of the Night on the Xbox Live Arcade doesn't have the cutscenes. Because it had to fit under. Mm -hmm. It originally was a 50 megabyte limit, and Symphony Night ended up being 100 megs or 110 or something like that. And like they were like, "Oh, naughty, naughty!" But they were like, eh, "It's a CD game." <laughs> yeah. But, you know that 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 old limit of theirs was bizarre. It's typical Microsoft doing stupid shit. For yep. Nintendo, did dumb stuff. Microsoft are right at the top, aren't they? Um. Hey, Kigo, Day of the Tentacle remastered. Did you pick that up? I did. I haven't got around to playing it yet. <laughs> it's on your well, list but yet. it's Day of the Tentacles. So. Yeah. It is Day of the Tentacle, and it is a really fun uh, point-and-click adventure game. It is, yeah. It's it's really, and really you cool. can switch between both graphical styles of the press of a button. Which I is like always that. That's really cool. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, there's there's a few things of note, but I'm trying to skip through it for time on anything. Uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Three, the bouncing booby simulator that where you occasionally smack a ball around, pretending that you're playing a game while you're just gawking at the girls, came out. It got released only in Japan, if I remember right, and didn't come out anywhere else because of some sort of hoo-ha that happened. I think everyone was like, we don't want Dead or Alive Extreme 3. And they were like, okay, we're not going to release it anywhere but Japan. Booby lady. So that kind of farted its way out from Japan. I, I think, uh, from what I remember of the press, the press weren't too keen on it. The pl but I think some players wanted it, some didn't. I don't know. I, mean, I just it's... looked it. I just looked it up. It was only uh, released in Asian territories, but it that has an English, English language version. option. Yeah, I mean, so I suppose if you wanted, it, you could get it. But I mean, what is it? Isn't it just beach ball with tits? No. Uh, 
Uh, Isn't that what they always are? Like, I mean, the you official. Know I, haven't, I haven't played one of them, so. The official title is Beach Volleyball Spin Off Title. Well, there you I go. Think, I think the only major addition, as far as um, it says, is that there was also Butt Battle. <laughs> there ah, was also Butt, butt Battle, yes. My mistake, then. Um, yeah, I know there was a lot of hoo-ha about it, but honestly, I thought it was a bit of a lot to do over nothing. If you were that desperate to pick it up, you could just import it. I believe that I believe the saddest thing that came out of that, though, I remember reading a tweet from one of the voice actresses, and she wanted to obviously do the voice acting for the English language version, but couldn't because they weren't going to release it over there due to the uh, the controversy yeah. that surrounded it, which is a bit sad, actually. I mean, it is a little silly as well, yeah. Yeah, they, like, I guess they lost some work for that, which is a bit of a bummer for them. Anyway, moving on. The game Slain came out. I did a video on it. It released. Uh, I thought it was okay, but it was a bit... I complained a lot about the combat, as did a lot of other people, apparently, because they completely overhauled it and eventually re-released it as Slain Reborn, I think, later on. Interesting. It's kind of like a really odd old-school Castlevania game. A bit too odd, with a bit... The music got a bit on my tits as well, but... What else are we looking at? Um, skipping ahead here. I don't think there's anything particularly of note. The, there was the Hyrule no, Warriors so. Legends for 3DS, but... Yeah. yeah. Killer Instinct no, I, Season I, 3. Towards the end, I don't actually see anything. Um, Star Ocean, the new Star Ocean came out I on didn't like March that. 31st. I didn't like that at all, and I'm pretty... Did you actually buy it? Yeah, yeah, I've still got it. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm pretty... You know me in JRPGs, I'm pretty um, yeah. forgiving. I didn't actually know you picked it up. Yeah, yeah I, I'm a pro it, I think. I'm pretty forgiving with JRPGs normally, but I just think the new Star Ocean game was just poor. Graphically, I think it was pretty ugly. The characters were just annoying. Um, though, though the witch character made me giggle. She's she's, she's wearing like a leotard with holes in it, which is just strange. Um, overall, the combat system was too basic for my liking. It was like a Tales of game, but with no depth. Is what I felt. I maybe I didn't give it enough shot. I think I played for five to six hours, but I just couldn't get into it. I just I I really tried, but mm, it's a shame. But hey, you can't you know you can't like them all. Uh, so if we move on to April, does anyone spot anything at the start of April? Except for, you know, the oh. obvious third third game in a series, right there. Okay. Uh, third oh. game in a series. Oh, third game of Rugby Challenge no, 3. Uh, no, I was talking about Sorcery Part 3, but, you know. Oh. oh no. <laughs> yeah, so right. uh, in that case... Well, then... Enter the Gungeon. Oh, Enter the Gungeon enter was the interesting, gun yeah. Yeah, um, fun little, you know, dungeon crawler game. Well, dungeon, it's a... Gungeon. Gungeon, because yeah. everything is made out of guns Gungeon and bullets. Crawler. Yeah, it yeah. was, uh, I don't know, I thought it was fun. I'm not really into those kind of games that much, no, uh, no. but I thought it was well done, and apparently got good reviews as well. I haven't found anything better for me, personally, than the, uh, the Binding of Isaac yet, and I played a lot of that, and I really like that style, but I haven't found anything that sort of replicated that sort of simple to start fun <laughs> for me, I guess. Well, I can understand that, seeing how you love to make babies cry. Shut your face, you slag! Isaac! 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 Yeah, Isaac was right. Isaac! No, I, should, I should pick up the new one. Anyway, um, Dark Souls 3 came out on the 12th. I've done an LP on it. Uh, I think Dark Souls 3 is generally pretty good, though I feel that as the third in the series, it suffers from what third games in the series do, which is repetitiveness and too familiar with the sort of yeah. style of it at this point. It's like, hey, we're going back to Dark Souls! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> essentially, like, I, I feel that because Dark Souls 1 stole all the good ideas, the other two had to try and think of new stuff to do. Um, I think it's a very... Don't get me wrong. I think Dark Souls 3 is a very, very good game. Uh, it's mild, it's leagues better than most regular games anyway. It's just, I feel at this point, the th as a third one in the series, it suffers from that quite a lot. Um, plus, I also hate the fact that I can't use much shielding. I, I didn't like that. <laughs> Fuck your shield. I like to play shield builds and I can't do it because everything's... Oh, we out. Shield. This is an action game now. Oh. Gotta dodge. I know. But besides, to be honest though, I think I was spoiled by the fact that the game of the year every year, Bloodborne, came out the year before and was just amazing. So, which and after that, Dark Souls Three seemed a bit lackluster. I think it's because you didn't have enough insight to fully appreciate how great Dark Souls Three is. Possibly, possibly. I could be, I could be being a shitter here, but hey. Anyone <laughs> spot anything on the way down? Uh, yes, on uh, April the twenty-first, I actually picked up and have been um, playing over the last couple of months Battlefleet Gothic oh, yeah. Armada. I remember. Um, Battlefield Gothic, uh, for people who don't know it, is Warhammer 40k, because actually a ton of Warhammer games have been coming out and are coming out, because uh, Games Workshop has finally opened up their licensing over the last couple of years. Um, Battlefield Gothic is... Broke. is <laughs> yes. Um, Battlefield Gothic is, um, uh, after the same tabletop game, also called Battlefield Gothic, is a... Uh, 
well, the battle fleet, you basically have spaceships from different Warhammer 40k uh, species that are fighting against each other. It's a real-time strategy game that you can pause or in multiplayer um, slow down. Um, it's really well made. It plays... It's not really a real-time strategy. You don't build any bases or whatever. You kind of pick your little like group of ships, whatever you want to take, into the current... Um, mission and then you only have those so sometimes you can have like two ships or sometimes you can have six ships but you'll never really have more than like eight i think so overall and you'd say you'd be pr you're in pretty impressed with it i'd say it is really good it's it runs on unreal engine 4 it's a beautiful game it runs really well uh i yeah it's not very expensive either and it has infinite replayability because it generates missions for you with a click of a button that's cool. Basically, and, if you, oh, if and the want... campaign, the campaign was amazing because it has that Warhammer 40k voice acting, where where it goes like like your your guy is called Admiral Spire, and every single person addresses you as Admiral Spire. Basically, so if, you want, if you want to play a game where you are using a massive cathedral with big guns on it to kill yep. people, that's the game you want to play. And then you get rammed by a bunch of orcs wearing pirate orcs, hats orcs, and shouting orcs, 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 To be orcs, fair, orcs. they do build some of their ships, like, 99% ramming and 0.1% yep. like, <laughs> space for people and the to, rest of it is just loads of rockets. To fully sell you on the game, there is a ship that the orcs have, which is made for ramming, that literally has an engine, a cockpit, and the entire front of the ship is a massive Bowie knife. And <laughs> it just rams things. That's pretty Cutting cool. right to the point there, I see. Yep. Speaking of cutting to the point, Star mm. Fox Zero farted its way out onto the Wii U this year. Ah. It's like they took yes, a good concept did. and said, how can we make it worse? Let's well, we can enforce all of these uh, control schemes on it. Yep. I know it was quite di uh, diversive, it was old Star Fox, but I really don't think that control system was a good idea. I didn't even pick it up. I, it's I, I Star Fox actually demo and I didn't it in the store, it. believe it or not. I actually found a Wii U demo unit that had one on. What? Yeah, it was Ow. bad. Are you, are you sure someone didn't just leave their Wii U out yeah, for someone to wonder, pick up? But it was. I wasn't. I wasn't impressed. Um, I like Star Fox. I got uh, Star Fox 64, 64 3DS. Um, I like Star Wing when it came out. Fun fact. Uh, I'm not sure if I ever told you guys. Um, Star Wing. Yeah, the the European name for Star Fox. Um, for the SNES. Oh. They made some press jackets for them, like, um, they're like these black bomber jackets, well, on the on the inside is orange, and on the back it's got Star Wing with Nintendo logo on it as well. They, I think they only made ten of them, my dad actually has one. Ooh. He won it at a competition back in the day. Not bad. And he pins all his like, little Nintendo badges all over it, which is quite fun. It's funny, because I, I believe there's a collector actually looking for those, because the Star, the Star Wing variant as well is quite rare, so... Anyway, that was just a bit of a side note. Anyway, Star Fox sucks. Boo. Yeah. Uh, on the 26th, PS4 Alienation came out by House Marquet, who are the people who made, for example, Super Stardust and Dead Nation and Resogun. Um, Top-down, bullet hell shooter, four-player co-op. Was really fun. Um, very beautiful game. Runs at, like, perfect 60 FPS and has, I think, the most particle effects I've ever seen in a game. Very, very fun. Can be picked up cheap. If you have a PS4, I think it's PS4 exclusive. If you have a PS4... Uh, definitely check it out. It's super nice, fun. Nice. Uh, anything, Something... anything more for you in uh, April, Kigo? There is, actually. And although yeah. the original core of the game came out in um, the previous year, the third chapter of King's Quest came out oh, in you've... April. And the you've rest of them you? came out yeah. throughout the year. It is a fantastic uh, series of uh, episodic uh, point-and-click adventure things. For people who've played the original King's Quest, there's a lot of things that hark back to it, and it's really emotional at points as well. It can really tug at the heartstrings. The second chapter is, admittedly, it's one massive puzzle, and the fourth episode is a lot of puzzles. But if you've played the original King's Quest, they're really good, and the fifth one may be really, really sad. The fifth episode, really sad. Is it like a proper point and click adventure is it yes. more like the uh is it more uh, like the telltale game uh or? no you you um you move around uh with the uh one direction you have to use items on items and there are death situations where okay. you can uh, get things wrong and dialogue oh. choices and things that you do will impact to some degree on later ones and uh it's yeah it's it's and it was released episodically and uh the epilogue came out just a little while ago um it's really the, good the publisher is sierra Yes. yes, Sierra. Dead, yes, it is. 
Uh, kind of brought back. Interesting. Oh, it's, uh, ah, it's uh, puppeted by Activision. Yeah. Interesting. But it's really, yes. it's really, really good. Um, I think you could probably make a good chronology with all the original games and the uh, chapters in uh, the New King's Quest and work out how things go. It's um, really good. Oh, that's excellent news. I'm glad, I'm glad it turned out good, because I know you're looking yes. forward to it. Yes, it was really good. Do you guys see what's out on the 3rd of, uh, 3rd of May? Uh, yes. Uh, the park. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Battleborn yeah. came out. Battleborn came out. Oh, man. Poor Battleborn. Battleborn had I don't so even... many problems. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I on have one, fuck gearbox, but on the other... <laughs> Let's say it like that. I got gifted by Ruford a Battleborn key including all of the DLC... And I still haven't used it. <laughs> well, it may be you and the I three keep, other people playing it. Anyway. I basically keep thinking, should I use it for myself? I don't think I want that. And then I think, should I give it to some someone else? I don't think I can do that to them. <laughs> oh, from what I gather, Battleborn wasn't a bad game. It just launched completely at the wrong time with the wrong message. Well, it wasn't a great game either. Well, apparently it's not it, awful. It's just it's it, an well, ugly looking game, which doesn't help. It's, it definitely just has problems out the wazoo it has like i mean the graphic style is ugly the the ui is a mess yeah, the gameplay is a fonts in there. yeah, yeah the, the the gameplay is a first person shooter moba which means you're going to be sitting in one match like 30 to 40 minutes you know like just grinding like in a moba not to mention it was coming out not long before another game that it was yeah, being that compared we'll to we'll go into it we're going to get bit. to that game eventually and it's I, weird. I think it's weird to be compared to that game as well because yeah. it's nothing well, it's, like it the it's way because it was... of the graphic style i think the, the graphic style yes i think it was mainly the graphic style and the way it was being um marketed in the um those yep. trailers with the graphic style gearbox specifically uh, sought after the competition with with uh, the game, which we'll go into in a bit. And I think they picked a really poor fight there. Yep. I mean, let's just say it like this. Right now, on Steam, there are 370 people playing Battleborn. Oh, nice thought, actually. Gotta be and honest. you can buy Battleborn for 3 euros. i got to be honest. Who's ever actually come out in a fight with Blizzard and won? <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. Good question. I mean, That's this keeps point. happening, and like I said to you, like Warhammer Online, for example, back in the day, I was like, shouldn't keep comparing itself to Warcraft. It's gonna, it's gonna end in tears. And it ended. It ended in tears. In tears. Yeah. It ended in tears. Oh no, that what was that game called? Uh, the one which had oh, what was it called? Ah, that MMO oh, we played. Ah, no, that MMO we played that had like that ginger girl in the uh, in the oh Wildstar. Wildstar. Um, and that was all, that compared itself completely to World of Warcraft. And... <laughs> Wildstar, who basically went like, "Hey, you guys, remember vanilla Warcraft? Uh huh. Did you have really good times in that? Yeah, I did because there was nothing like it at the time, and I played it with all of my friends. Yeah, we're like making a cool game with like cool combat and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's gonna have the exact same quest structure and ridiculously hard to get together raid grouping and um, wow. and so on that uh, vanilla WoW had." <sighs> You kind of lost me there. Dreadful. Anyway, poor Battleborn. We'll leave it to where it belongs in the dust. Yeah, and we'll go and we'll go where greatness begins. Well, to look, May 13th. Wait, before we get to May 13th, a, a big game did come out, an Uncharted 4. I personally wait. haven't played it, but one of our friends oh, has said it was yeah, very, okay. very good. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I believe it, it came out to critical acclaim. It was supposed to be really, really good. Uh, graphically, it's absolutely stunning. So, yeah, Uncharted 4. That's always good. I, I can't. I, guess I can't I, really comment any further because I've played it, but I know it's. Yeah, I've heard good I don't things. play Uncharted. Yeah. Um, but May thirteen. Yeah, Doom came out. Amazing! All sixty-six million gigabytes of it. Like, holy 66 shit! Sixty-six gigabytes. Game. Uh, I like Doom it. has twenty-nine gigabytes of patches for it's like crazy. multiplayer shit. It's crazy. It's crazy. Doom. But Doom though is, is an so amazing, an amazing good. game. Uh, it's. We were talking, well, funny enough, we were talking about before we started this. I mean, Kiki, you were playing yeah. it before we got started. Yeah, because I Halloween and I already just got beat it. it in the past few days. Yeah. I basically beat it in two days after it came out. I, I, could I actually not beat it a couple of days it. ago. I, I, I yeah, I, I could not stop playing it. And then I kept pestering Halloween about it. And I was like, play the game, play, play the game. The differences that I can say between them as I played the older ones a lot and uh, Doom 3. This Doom, new one, is a lot faster 
than the um, the older dooms. And you can take advantage quite fluidly of the different uh, levels that you're on. And you can use ammunition, as far as I've gathered, quite freely for the most part. And you, there's lots of things that you can tweak to it. And Don't forget it took, Ripinter. It no, took Ripinter. me a little while to start getting used to the speed of it, because compared to the originals, it is a lot faster. The enemies are also a lot faster, too. Yes. Even compared to Doom 3, they, they're a lot but faster. Also I mean, don't forget, oh, Doom 3 fast its way at, like, one miles an hour, though. It's slow as. But, but um, maybe with it Doom 1, though, it's, um, mm. you also, you had, you only yeah. had this one plane, essentially, didn't you? You could yes. shoot forward, and it, that would hit up and blow. It compensates for yeah. it by you being able to very, you don't really have to worry that much about, Ooh, I'm running a little low on health. It'll only inform you when, by the way, you're about to die. You may want to kill something now. You may want now. to punch you, something. Yeah. Really and then you hard. kill something, and then you're back in the game. Yeah. And when you need you ammo, you just use the chainsaw to cut someone in health, and oh. ammo comes out. Yeah, it's just, like, Doom like, Doom is amazing. I, I imagine you've had people talk to you to death about Doom this year, so yeah. I, I don't think we'll bore you. The way you that it, the gameplay systems of Doom great. all work together it's... to create such a fluid gameplay throughout the levels is it's, just yeah it's a <laughs> game that after i played a little bit of it i was actually skeptical about if i would enjoy it but as i'm slowly getting used to the speed of it i'm starting to enjoy it more yeah for sure yep. it, it definitely draws you in and i think i think the easiest thing to say about doom is that 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 is how you take a, an old game and make it to a new game also let's talk about the plot of doom well there are demons yeah there's demons <laughs> there are demons Kill they're them. bad I mean, I could start talking about it, but I think Doom Guy would literally burst out of the screen punch and punch you. me to yes, get out and get away from the plot. plot. But, but don't, don't forget, talk about the plot. Rip and tear yeah. until it is done, and those are the arc words, and those uh, work quite well. The, the, that's that's literally that's what the game opens with, and that's what you're doing from start to beginning. Yeah. Something I spotted on the 17th, by the way, Shadwin. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, it was like a stealthy Oh yeah, you played thing. that, didn't you? Yeah. They gave me a key for it, and they were like, hey, you can do a review of Shadwin and stuff, and I played it, and I decided not to do a video on it, because I'd just, I'd be mean. That's why I don't <laughs> tend to do videos on things that are super shit, because I, I just, I don't know, I just feel that they're like, here, have a key, and I'd just be like, your game sucks major ass, and I think it'd probably be better for them not to do a video on it than do a video on it, but hey. This is where all the developers who send you a key and are wondering why you never made a video shed a single tear. There is <laughs> something <laughs> else that actually came out on the same day that I knew came out, but I never experienced, which is Shadow, Shadow of the, the Beast. The Beast. Yeah. Oh yeah, for And that was just yeah. like, out of nowhere, it's like, really? Yeah. When was the last Shadow of the Beast game released? A long time ago. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Snes era, wasn't it? Uh, I think so, yeah. The Amiga game, all, wasn't it? They all got released on the oh, Amiga. Oh, yeah, Amiga, definitely. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Shadow of the Beast, Shadow of the Beast looked cool, but... No, yeah, get agreed, I never got around to it. Hmm. Hey, Valkyria Chronicles Remastered, uh... Came out for Maybe you should yeah. all, uh, pick that up. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Pretty good, I hear. Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. It's a... it's oh, order, yeah. order, pick up, uh, pick up Valkyria Chronicles. And we can't avoid it any longer, either. Overwatch came out on the 24th. Ah, uh, uh, yes, Overwatch it is did. huge. It's no surprise. It came out. I don't think we even need to talk about. It. Everyone knows it exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it is just a game where you can play it, play it for ages. You can go away for three months and come back, and even if new yeah. heroes have come out, you have access to them immediately. Yeah, really, really good, really good, yeah. uh, really good model to use. I'm not a huge fan of the. I gotta be honest, I'm not a massive fan of the buy buy the crate thing they got going on. Oh, but God, hey, yeah. if that means that the characters and maps are always free, then so be it. You know. Yeah, it's you know, that, it's the way to do it. Where it's, like... it's it's a fun game. It's been establishing itself as an yeah. esport. You can play it casually. You can play it with friends. It's got fun game modes like those brawls and so on. I haven't played it in a couple of months. I just reinstalled it now, and I've been playing like around here, around there. Yeah. It's it's still fun. It's colorful. It's fun. Yeah, indeed. I don't know. No, it's again, a game. again, everybody it's knows game. about it. There's no point and us going too yeah, much. From the start it. of it to now, you can go into a game and get killed by four bastions <laughs> and a Beautiful. Reinhardt. Beautiful. Yep. And don't forget to play Hanzo, because who fuck the meta. Anyway. Uh, I'm actually uh, going to skip ahead to something quite big, because I feel we might have to talk uh, about this a little bit. Can, can I go first? Yeah, go, go, go for it. Because on the 24th, when Overwatch came out, oh, there, was actually, there was actually a game that came out, which I nah, picked no up. Played that. And... No. no one played no, that? No one played that? No, no one played None of you Ninja played Ninja Ollie, Ollie Ollie 2, Welcome to the Ollie? Oh, actually. <laughs> Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. I actually played Ollie, Ollie 2. So fuck you. Oh, did you? No, I'm of course talking about same day as Overwatch. Um, I spent a lot of money on that day. Um, same day as Overwatch, Total War Warhammer. Still should have been called Total Warhammer. It should have been called Total Warhammer, but they can't do it because Total War itself is actually a trademarked franchise Total name. Total Warhammer. Total Warhammer. Okay, anyway, Total War Warhammer, Total War yeah. Warhammer, Total Warhammer came out. Anyway, um, 
Age I bought Sigma that. It's a Electric PC Google exclusive. Uh, this thing is not going to come to consoles. Uh, it's a PC exclusive. It's Total War set in the Warhammer fantasy world, like the original one, not the rebooted Age of Sigma one they have going on. It is so good. I always kind of liked the Total War games. I own a couple of them, like Total War Shogun and Shogun 2 and so on. But this one is the first time where you have completely different factions that play completely different it is graphically so beautiful they've basically turned the tabletop miniatures absolutely perfect into these animated um models the the sound and everything is the battles are huge it's they streamlined everything a little bit more like it's way more focused on just like you know like killing the enemy and so on and not like tons of logistics and stuff it is a massively fun game i have like 150 hours in it they're constantly adding like new shit into it with dlc and so on i don't even care i'm just spending the money it doesn't matter i'm throwing all my money in that game because it is he bought so blood DLC good. and I, I give him a lot of grief for that it I, two euros you're paying for blood, for blood you gifts. fool it's to oh, circumvent the region. I, I told you that. I t- anyway. And I told you they could have made it free if that was the case. Or 1p. No, they can't because if one they make P. it free, then every- they- that's too little. Oh, come off it. It's blood. <laughs> Rubbish. I'm going to pay every single price for any DLC I'm, that I'm comes sorry, out. But I- I'm just thinking river. about you, you streamline things. I just want to see an orc army try to have, like, um, governors for their settlements with acumen. Look! Documentation! Oh. Let me see. Get the glasses. <laughs> and then he just slices it in half with an axe and hands the remnants back. And he's like, <clears throat> and then just walks off. But no, it is a fantastic game. I've got tons of videos for it on my channel as well. If you want to check it out, it's beautiful. Enough, enough talk about Total War. I'm, I was I'm expecting sure. you to like uh, say link in the description I was about below. To say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, it's my like video, and bitch. You don't, you don't get that. Actually, I'm going to link both Please channels. Please like and subscribe. Anyway. However, I'm going to skip to uh, June 21st, if I may, simply because of, uh, well... Let's have a look. Mm-hmm. Have a look. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. 21st, so, yes! So, three or so years ago, there was a big Kickstarter. It was from a- the man who a- had a lot to do with Mega Man, in fact, called Inafune. Oh. And yeah, he yeah, made no. a Kickstarter called Mighty Number no. 9. Wow. It was actually a counting game that you just count to nine and that's it. I don't know why people put so much money. In- oh wait, it wasn't. Yeah, it that was might. the spiritual successor for Mega Man, and in all and in the original concept art, it looked amazing, and the things they had going for it looked amazing. It and was slowly. It was going surely, to answer all of the needs mm-hmm. of like the true successor to Mega Man, and to this day, even though it's been released, we are still looking for that successor yep, to Mega because Man because it's called the spiritual successor because it was dead on arrival. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> There to be were fair, a lot of things that went wrong with the Mighty Number no. Nine. To be fair, I think it's this. pretty crazy that it actually came out on every single platform. Windows, it Mac, it Linux, hasn't, though, PS3, it hasn't, it hasn't it actually, even it hasn't made its it way even, to everything yet. It even oh, came okay. out on BBC <laughs> Micro. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, it, it, together, there's supposed to be a 3DS it, version and a Vita version, which still don't exist. They, they, oh. st- people who've backed those from what I gather still do not have their copies. There are well, many to things. Be fair, the, the the Vita doesn't exist either, so uh, I uh, guess I can see uh, There are many things uh, that went wrong, including that poorly timed trailer. The trailer was dreadful. The uh, anime fans on Prom Night thing was bizarre because old school stereotypes are fun, I it's, guess. It's like, hey, here's these uh these tech things of how it's going to look. Oh, it looks really great. What does it look like now? Mm. Yeah, it's it's bizarre because the, the 2D animation reminded me of um, almost... Trying to think even, of like Blaze Blue even style, then, when they but... showed some of the 3D stuff, the lighting effects were a lot better in that. They were, and then they yeah. went, "Here's what we actually released." Well, hmm. and even then, the game tanks at FPS when you play it on the consoles. It's bizarre. I mean, again, you could you could do an entire video on what went wrong with Mighty Number no. Nine, but I mean, between yeah. the mishandling of the Kickstarter, the trying to launch that other Kickstarter in the middle of it, all sorts of stuff, asking for yeah. more money for um, for voice. I kickstart my Kickstarter so I can kickstart my kicks. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, it was just messy, and the entire thing was poor. And I think if it was a seven hundred thousand dollar Kickstarter, and it came out as it did, I don't think it got as much flack. But the fact it raised so much money and still had, I mean, it's not even like a terrible game. It's just a mediocre game, and that's maybe even worse, perhaps. I don't. Yeah, know. I think that's actually worse. Yeah. I mean, if it was a complete like utter crap fest, it, it it's just funny. so forgettable but now it's, it's just, just so yeah forget- exactly it, it is literally forgettable you can pick up a key for like three quid it's just sad i don't know i don't again don't spend too much time in a single game but it's mighty number no. nine was a sad way of seeing that go and i know a lot of people have fears over um some of the other kickstarters like bloodstained for example the castlevania one 
Um, yep. But having actually played that one, I can say it's actually fears should be alleviated. The, it's really good. The, the main but, point to take from it is that the failure of a really, really big Kickstarter, as you said, makes people worry about other ones, makes them that yeah. much wary to invest in them, and it can have ripple effects on all the Apparently others. it has. Apparently the... Um, I, I'm sorry, I might, I'm pulling stats out my ass here, but I have read this somewhere. Uh, the, the gaming Kickstarters have actually got less money in recent years uh, since this sort of thing's happened. So it does make... Well, which makes thing. sense. You know, early access makes people wary. Yeah, exactly. Kickstarter makes people wary. It's like we want we want to pay money for the things that were shown to us. If I open a trailer for an early access game and it shows me, like, beautiful graphics, huge open world, and, like, 20 options, and then I buy the early access game and it's, like, a quarter of the world, the graphics are in, like terrible and of the 20 options there are five implemented like don't make a fucking trailer that I shows know, all of it yeah i mean the, what the fuck? kickstarter is a risk anyway because you're not you're not pre-ordering a game you're you're sort of assisting investing. someone making it. you're investing into a game right right yeah. and if anything I, i'll say like the tim schafer kickstarters show why some and you can you can actually get an inkling to why some publishers now because before you're but to, sorry to clarify before you're almost like Publishers, you guys are evil. You cancel games left, right, and center. You didn't give money to my favorite developer to do stuff. Why, why, why? And after Kickstarter, you can now kind of see them looking and going, this isn't planned <laughs> right. This isn't yeah. going to go well. You've missed your milestones here, 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 and here. We're going to have to pull out. And it, it gives you more... It, if anything, it gives you quite a fascinating insight to how games are made and how sometimes games don't get made properly. It's weird. Yeah, how sometimes the publisher will just say, I do not think this is going to yeah, turn and, out and, right. And, I remember as a kid being really annoyed and you see, you read like a publisher's pulled out or they've cancelled a game you're like why and now as an adult you look on it and you think that's you, I can perfectly understand if you're if you're there with your money and you're saying you've missed all of your milestones and what have you got to show for it the tech demo was amazing but what, what you what you've got here isn't what we agreed on you can certainly see how that goes anyway enough of uh, mighty number no. nine and Kickstarter failures. yeah terrible moving quickly past we've got Tokyo Mirage Sessions F E which was a bizarre Fire Emblem oh, slash that SMT. Fucking game. Yeah, right. Now, the actual game itself, I don't find personally that interesting. What I did find more interesting was the bizarre controversy stuff that popped over the fact that the American and Euro European versions, like, censored some cleavage or removed some vagina they bones censored or something. Skin and stuff. Or something yep. so completely irrelevant that I'm surprised there was a big hoo ha about it. Well, you know, in the Japanese version, her arms are bare-skinned, and in the in the European version, she's for some reason wearing long sleeve gloves. So people, you know, obviously right. have to threaten to kill the developers. Well, yeah, indeed. <laughs> when I was growing up, actual censorship in games was pissing annoying. You'd end up with like entire story sections being chunked out, or oh, things not. Oh, being oh done. you mean growing up in Germany, where I where your, while you guys were? What do you mean? It's your fault. You we guys had were censorship. shooting people. I was killing androids. No. Look at Probotet. I had to shoot aliens with robots because of you people. Well, maybe, but look at Command and Conquer. Oh, it right, took me, yeah. I had to learn English <laughs> and get the internet before I realized that, no, the story of Command and Conquer is not actually that everyone right, that you're controlling right, is, in that. fact, a robot and goes... Exactly. When he gets run over. And that, and that brings us back to the point. Someone losing a bit of cleavage or their boobs aren't on display as much, it, like, does that... Is that a huge problem? I can see... I can I can certainly see people going all censorship is bad and to be honest I agree I'm not a huge fan of it but as far as censorship goes it's much worse having all of your games turned into robots it's really annoying Soldier of Fortune 2 oh, German right. version yeah that's like, everyone fair, is that's, a robot to be fair that was actually a really cool conversion I like that the sparks were flying yeah it was really cool uh, but anyway like the, the game itself I find la not that interesting but the controversy behind it yeah. was actually quite interesting. Again, I can see why people were kind of upset, but it seems like quite a minor thing to be upset about. Having all religious stuff nuked in every single game ever when growing up was annoying. Nintendo. You use the cross weapon in Castlevania. Oh, I don't know. Well, anyway. <laughs> Can't we turn it into an X? Yeah. Yes. God Eater Resurrection came out uh, a couple of days later. I liked that. That was pretty fun. Uh, yeah, that's the console version. Yeah, the PC version came later in the year. Yeah, um, I, thought that was, I thought that was really cool. Um... It's it's fun. It's got amazing music, and it comes bundled with the second game. Can't can't argue with that. Uh, well, with the first yeah. game. Anyone else for um June before we move on? Uh, nope. No, Kiko? no, Tiger? no. No. Oh, all right. Oh, nothing. No. Moving on to July to September, that you can you can actually tell that the games are getting thinner now because they're matching stuff together. Uh, yeah. Let's see. We've got uh, July the sixth. Yeah, Pokemon Go, which of course everybody 
probably tried. It was I, big. big I still have it on here. Yeah, I've got, I've got it on mine. I don't, I'm obviously not use it anymore, but... Uh, Which game? Pokemon Which game? Go. Oh, you right. can catch a Pikachu with a crystal. Yeah, that was big. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I spent I spent a lot of time with that, walking through the city with my girlfriend and meeting people and the, stuff like that. It was the really main fun. problem it had was that it was being done by Niantic. Yes. And Niantic had no communication. Like, they did not communicate with anyone. Yeah. And they had a system going about where things were nearby, and it crippled the servers to do it, and so then it just went. And it's like, Okay. The moment the tracking system disappeared, the game died for me. And then like, there stopped. were the um, there was the Poke Radar and stuff websites like that. And then they were stopped. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, where do I find things now? Well, you just sort of have to walk randomly and hope. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was it was a lot of fun because we were sitting at work, you know, not working and checking out the Pokemon stuff, seeing like what's nearby and whatnot. And I went around yep. with a friend. Uh, we we went together like around her town and like caught stuff. It was fun. I... Yeah. For me, one some of the funniest things this year were actually because of Pokemon Go, because close to my work there is this uh, kind of big park, and in the middle of it is like a square that has a statue, and the statue was. Uh, one of the gyms and I got myself on Amazon I ordered myself you know like a an Ash Ketchum cap <laughs> oh yeah that's you know like, like that's, he was wearing the song with that, that. I, I, I tweeted that and, um, and then he went to and, catch and all and of I basically, them basically when the weather was nice I went into the park I went to that statue I sat down there I put down a, um, lure. a lure so that people could see it and I put on my hat and I swear I sit there for five minutes and this was before the game was officially out as well like when you had to on Android when you had to download like the file and install it by hand in five minutes you had multiple people sitting there they would see my hat they would like you know wave or people would come over and we would talk at one point we had like 30 people sitting there and we were all talking pokemon and walking around and catching them yeah i had a very, was I had a very similar fun. experience up in the park um in the city and there was three statues there's like these giant victorian lions there and each one of them was, one of them was a poker stop one of them was a gym, right. the other one was a poker stop, and they were really close together. You must have had 50, 60 people there, and everyone was chatting to yeah, each but... other, showing each other what they've caught. It was really fun. And then someone yep. stuck a lure on everyone, like, gathered around. It was hilarious. Like I will I will never forget, I mean, we, there, there are tons of videos about that on YouTube, but I will never forget when uh, a... Uh, what was it? What was it? A... Um, what is the English name for it? A, a Growlithe. A, a Growlithe uh, showed up on our radar we didn't know where it was and suddenly some guy called over to us and he went like the Growlithe is over here and suddenly 20 grown <laughs> men and women just all got up and walked over there and everybody who had no idea what we were doing was just going like what the hell is happening and we all walked over there and caught ourselves a Growlithe it was just yeah. I don't know we had a lot of you had to be there it's over now it's dead but you had to be there. It, it was, was wonderful. It was Neantics to lose, and somehow they, they fumbled it. did it, yeah. <laughs> somehow they did it. Which is a shame. But I remember sitting in Skype with Kiko here, and he'd be saying, like, oh, there's like nearby. I'll be back in a minute. He's here. I hear him zoom out the front <laughs> yep, door. I went out. Yep. And now, it, when that happened, it was like, they changed it all. It was like, I can't find anything. Yeah. It's funny stuff. But yeah, uh, still. that was that, and... Hey. Let's see what else came out in uh, July... Not a whole lot. Oh, there was that awful Ghostbusters game. Oh yes, oh, God, there was we the don't, Ghostbusters game. That. Dreadful that was. Um, yeah. There was the Ghostbusters game. Let's see. There's that Square Enix um, RPG I Am Setsuna. Looks like that came yeah. out in July. I think that was the Japanese version, though, I think. Didn't pick hmm. that up. Though. No, neither did I. Just... Let's have a look at what else uh, came No, no, out. that was actually, this is the, uh, it came out worldwide. Oh, okay. Um, Necropolis came out on the 12th, which uh, Luke played extensively and is apparently not all that great. Uh, Starbound that finally released officially uh, left did? early access. Oh, I played, on the it, 22nd. The only time I ever played Starbound was with you guys when we had it on early access. It is a very enjoyable yeah. game. It is I quite did, enjoyable. I did play it a bit a lot with Rufus, content. and uh, it was fun. Yep. Upgraded uh, my ship, made it bigger, had everything on my ship, never needed to land. Hmm. It was really yep. good. On July 26th, some ports or remasters, which are not really remasters, came out, which I never thought I would see. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 oh, yeah. suddenly just released for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. I own both of those on 360, and they were fun, but I never thought anyone would bring those forward. But then again, Marvel, you know, they're kind of, everyone knows Marvel at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, in July, I didn't really, no, didn't wasn't really pick anything amount. up in July. August no. August crapped the Little King's story on us on the 5th, which was a terrible port. 
Um, August 2nd, Abzu came out for Windows and PS4. I picked that up. And uh, it's a very beautiful, very serene game made by the people who also made Journey, uh, which is also a very beautiful, very serene game. It's an underwater game uh, where you you know... Well, it's because it's a nice underwater <laughs> game. It's also third person, which makes it a lot uh, easier okay, for okay. me. But um, but yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. It has no voice acting at all. It has no text or anything, but it still tells a story that I thought was very compelling and interesting. It's very beautiful. So like, check out a video, maybe. And, you know, uh, what else we got? Well, well. We got that big uh, one on the ninth. Oh let, god! Oh, let's bleh. have a look. Uh, the big one on the ninth. Yeah. yeah, the big one. The big one on the ninth. Then also on the twelfth, because for some reason yeah. it comes out on consoles first. Because you know. Then, let's. It's the the gigantic <laughs> uh, Sean Murray elephant in the room, isn't it? Yeah, no I think it's the No Man's Sky. No yeah. Man's but Sky can was, we meet uh... each other? <laughs> I made a funny yeah, video about that, which has like sixty thousand views apparently, because everyone hates that game. No Man's Sky was an interesting concept that got out of hand, I think. That's how I, I reckon that went. I, I it was think a very no small Sky... studio that got the backing of a really big giant and it was like, Sony, yeah. we can make this! Um, it's, it's, it's a perfect example of the runaway hype train. Yep. It was a developer who was so caught up in his own hype that like he he said things that were in the game that weren't actually in the game. Mountains. And he like just kept there saying is, that uh, over and over. He, he channeled the Molyneux he, quite He Molyneux'd maximum potential. He Molyneux'd. Ne- Todd, never Todd go, Howard. Never go Scotty Molyneux. We will, you will never be... It will be so difficult to meet any, another player. And then two people got to the same, same location. Planet. Seriously. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, can you see other people? Yes. So if two players <laughs> meet, they can see each other. Yes. But the chance that they're meeting is so small. On the first, in the first 24 hours, two people on the PlayStation 4 version managed to meet. And they went in the exact same spot, and it was all on stream and everything. And they couldn't see each other no matter what they tried. And all they ever said on Twitter about this at any point was, Wow, I can't believe that happened. And then nothing was said about it ever They went again. radio they... silence for like four months. Yeah, <laughs> and then the, the but then the PC version came out three days later. And not only was it, like, an unoptimized, ugly piece of shit, uh, which actually made me immediately refund it, um, but people also went data mining, and it turns out there is not a single piece of code inside the game for any kind of communication between clients. Literally, the only thing that happens is that your names and so on for animals are uploading, uploaded to their servers. That's it. The game has no other network connectivity. So multiplayer, seeding other people, nope, not even in the game. Yeah. I, no Man's sad. Sky. I saw a, uh, I saw an article about it where someone is actually now, and I think I've noticed this with developers. Someone has actually said the No Man's Sky hype and marketing debacle because it got huge it got so many articles and was even mentioned on actual tv um was such a blow to show to developers and publishers that they need to show and not tell a lot more again it was eurogamer yeah it was eurogamer yeah that apparently a lot of developers and so on are now all about like if we show something from our game we will not just talk about it. We will show it in a video. We will show it in a screenshot, and it will be in the game like this. Because otherwise, like people are not dry. taking yeah, it. Yeah, it's it was a. It's rare you get to see such an impressive explosion of fail, yep. like like the, something like that happening. It's... The No Man's Sky Steam version on day one had a hundred and eighty thousand people playing, and on day two had less than 8,000 playing. Somewhat That's in two drop. days. That's in two days. And Steam, and, Steam and I don't... had to stick that special notice about refunds on it, didn't they? Yeah, they actually had to extend their refunds. They actually had to extend the refunds for No Man's Sky from the normal two hours. Yeah, strange. Yep. Yeah. Even, um, even good old games, uh, instead of their usual refund, uh, start, suddenly started offering immediate refunds for the game. Because normally, as far as I'm aware, they have something like, oh, you need to wait for 30 days or something like that. 
Yeah, so that, was a, that was a bit messy. But again, yeah, another was... game came out, though, oh. that will uh, make you uh, very sad. It came out for the 3DS. I saw. On the yeah. 19th. Yeah. On the 19th. Metroid Prime Federation oh. Force. Oh. oh yeah. I, re I remember we were watching that E3. Were you both there, Kamba? Um, I think I was. And the, yeah. I remember the Metro logo came up, and I was like, and we were watching it, and then... We were then, like, holy shit. We were like, oh my god, it's in the Metro game, and then slowly the realisation dawned on us that... Uh... It was basically his equivalent of that Final Fantasy VII is coming, and then they all went, yeah! And then it was <laughs> and then the old the game, the friggin PlayStation like... one. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh... And it's oh, just like... Man. Okay, I mean, you, I mean, Nintendo you, you got, know you, they they bolt they bolted that one because it sold about three copies, but... You got your Metroid game, though. Yeah, I mean, still... Yay! <laughs> now all we need is other M2 to fully finish I off can the IP. I can see what they were going for, and I can see why they wanted to do it, but it feels very much like, she it. We got us a, a game here that looks all right, but probably won't sell by itself. Uh, you know, other than like a budget 4.99 price. Watch if Stick we Metroid put the on it. Metroid on yeah, it. Not realizing that the backlash would be absurd. Oh god! Everyone so, will agree with so this. Backlash. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they know, they they know what happened there. It's just, I mean, what can you say? Let's really? hope they learned from that. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they, they were like, done. we have learned from not this. Not to release Metroid we are, games. We are never making another Metroid yeah, game. Yeah, we will never make a Metroid game ever again. Oh uh, no, that's not what you're supposed to learn. Yeah. Never again. Okay. Uh, Deus Ex came out in the same month. I haven't played it yet. I can't divide. I Neither haven't picked I. it up. I I, it up. Gift, I, I got gifted it actually. I really like the first one. I need to play uh, not, it. Not yeah. like it, sorry, not like the, the third original DSX. Yeah, yeah. I like that one as well. I mean like DSX Human Revolution. So did I, so did I. Yeah, I thought it was a very, very good game, and I l I'm actually going to install it tonight. In fact, I'm looking forward to uh, playing it. I got gifted it about a month ago, I think. Well, Mankind Divided? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, you got to tell me uh, how it yeah, is. I, think I haven't, you, I haven't you, actually you've, watched... You've acquired it, haven't you, recently as well? I, I haven't actually watched anything about it. Yes. No, I, I, I literally knew nothing about it, so I'm very much looking forward to giving that a whirl. My dad would be pleased, because Madden NFL came out in the same month. <laughs> Yay! Uh, he of course yeah. has to have the latest version of Madden because how else could he get the 49ers to win? Because they ain't going to be winning in real life, are they? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to nod. Yeah, football, American football. Yes. Team just but then on badly. August the 13th, we actually had um, uh, multiple things coming out. We um, did uh, one in particular favorite of mine. In fact, the Attack on Titan game. Yes, Attack on Titan game, which is uh, you know also on PC and is a really good port. It's actually, incredibly good. After you what? sort your microphone out. Oh, yeah. well, they fixed that with a hot yeah, fix yeah, yeah. like a day later. Yeah, but, but Attack on Titan, I made, there's no point talking about too much. I made a video on it showing exactly what it's yeah, about. Same. But it is a good game. It follows the story pretty much from start to finish of the anime with a slightly yeah, it little adds bit of extra, some extra stuff. stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very fun. It's and honestly, fun. honestly, I was extremely surprised because I was very uncertain how they would actually make the whole gameplay from the show work if it's very and fluid it's very it. quick they did it it's super yeah. you can you can like pull off some crazy shit in honestly that game. if you want and if you're interested fun. check out my video because I, I do about a 17 minute video showing you the movement the story yeah. stuff and how it all works it's really fun yeah. it really is i also have like a one hour stream that i did on it also yeah, on, yeah. A lot, a lot of good little game that was uh, same I day no the uh, game exists yeah same day <laughs> um we talked about this earlier real quick same day that the um PS4, uh, the the Windows uh, version of God Eater Resurrection and God Eater 2 Rage Burst came out. God Eater is really cool. Another solid Namco entry. Uh, really good stuff. Yep. Yep. Um, and then, of out. course, this is really big for... Uh, I don't know if Kikoski actually has it, but this is really big for... No, he doesn't have it. Well, but this well is really I, big for, uh, I got Halloween. some things from the event, though. You do, that's yeah. true. Uh, yeah. World of Warcraft Legion officially released. This yeah. was basically the... Um, ah, so my last one... Um, hmm... And then they released this one. Yeah, Wars of like... Draenor wasn't the most popular of expansions, mainly because of the huge content drought and the fact that it was orcs, orcs, orcs again. Was well, it... I heard you liked orcs. As it's commonly known in the fandom, the Orc Lords of Orknor. <laughs> but, <laughs> they decided, um... hey, you know what? We'll make this one. Yeah. Legion is very, very good. I still, in fact, I've still got it. I'm still playing it at the moment, um, on and off, mind you. But it's a lot. He's of fun. playing it right now. He's right actually in a raid. Right, right this now. second. He is grinding um, right. some rep as we speak. Oh, I don't raid anymore. Too the fucking what are they called? Like the the buccaneers? What were they called again? The blood cell blood buccaneers. Sale. Yeah. Blood cell buccaneers. is grinding it. Dragged Kiko's ass when we smacked we smacked goblins up for hours. We we did a lot of hours. <laughs> many. Many we hours. Couldn't go to gadgets. Sam. Could never go I back to gadgets. I still remember the reputation, mine. I still remember the screams. 
But Legion's, Legion's really good. They improved everything that everyone said that they didn't like about Draenor. They dropped the garrison -y stuff and made it smaller but still fun. They got really good story stuff in. They got Liam O'Brien back for as uh, Illidan, which was cool. Uh, and they have Khadgar. They got Khadgar being awesome, which is quite fun. Generally, the Demon Hunts got introduced. I made a couple of videos on it. It's it's a really good expansion uh, as far as expansions go. Probably my favourite since Wrath of the Lich King, actually. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't want to go too much. It's World of Warcraft. If you don't know what it is yeah, at this point, yeah. I'd be surprised. But it's it's really fun. So very, All right, very then we move into September, where I don't see a lot at the start until the 9th. No, Phoenix Rye on the 8th. Well, I don't have that. Objection! I don't have it either, but Objection, I Objection, to... your honor. Objection, I still haven't bought it, but I plan to. Um, the Phoenix Objection, Wright... I don't even have a 3DS. <gasps> Objection! The Phoenix Wright was Objection, good. this man can only see in 2 Phoenix Wright's always good, it's like a good book, and it just... At some point I'll buy it and play it, it's... I need to get on with it. What are you thinking on the yeah. ninth, then? Uh, on the 9th, I actually picked up Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander, which uh, was in early access for a while, and then released fully on um, the 9th. Is that a I... to Babylon 5? <laughs> no, okay. I hadn't. I didn't have. I think it's a play on that, though. Um, I didn't have anything um, to do with the early access. I only uh, found out about the game once it released on that day. It is a a two D pixel graphics uh, game, which is like an RPG kind of like t base management kind of XCOM ish game with Final Fantasy style turn based battles. It's quite fun. It's very cheap. I've got um, some stream videos about it as well if you want to check it out. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I think it's a super fun game. I was extremely surprised by it. And it's very. it's got a lot of like referential humor for, you know, Star Trek, Babylon 5, and Star Wars, and all, all of the Trek, big, you know, say. like space things. Back when I was at yes. the Academy. When I was at the Academy. <laughs> Halcyon 6. Started with a song. Well, you know what they always say about those kind of games? It's better to have bought than... Nah, you lost it. Not he lost, lost it. Lost he lost it. it. I'm done. You're done. Better You're to done. have bought the boss. Na, 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 anyway, na, na, na. Uh, yeah, that was on the ninth. That was that. Um, because I have plucked anything else. I've plucked <laughs> the rose. It's really not a. It's not a busy month, month for us. I don't think there was some interesting games. Seraph came out, which I did a video on. I really enjoyed. Oh, that one. Yeah. The, the, mm -hmm. the angel shooting twin stick thingy uh, mm -hmm. platformer. Really good, actually. Uh, SMT same Apocalypse. Day. Same day, uh, Cossacks 3, I actually, um, oh, the yeah. very nice, yeah, the very nice developers, um, actually contacted me and gave did me a key. Did you tell them I to stop a... developing Cossacks and make more Stalker? <laughs> I tried, but <laughs> I, I don't know if they understood me. Um, but no, I made a stream on that, uh, Cossacks 3 is like, you know, a real-time strategy game. I thought it was, I thought it was fun. I'm not big into real-time strategy games, but I think they made a really cool game that is super open to, like, modding and tinkering with. It's not Stalker, though. No. Anything, um, anything you spot, Kiko? Nope. <laughs> well, on the 23rd, empty, yeah. we talked about this earlier when we were talking about the events and early access. Early access on, yeah. on the 23rd, Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade quote-unquote released, which is like me saying Reapers. Um, Reapers. It, it's, they literally just went, shit, this is the deadline we've set. We don't actually have like anything really of what we wanted to have and release in the full game fuck it we need some money we're literally just gonna call it release version change all of our advertising and literally cut out everything we've advertised and just like pluck it out on uh, put it out on steam pay a couple of streamers to you know at least play it for a couple of hours and hope that we get some sales it's uh, so much Sad. potential and just everything wasted it is, it is I think you can get it for 10 euros now, but like, don't ten euros too much. Do, uh, don't do, do it. It has like thing, a thousand. Do you use one of the play. things that uh, you like talking about, like It would be like you taking the uh, developer into the room. You open up the big book, and it says, "You know about your release." It says here. <laughs> what, it says here you're a heretic. You're a heretic. <laughs> it says you're a grot. Anyway, more, King, um, more King's Quest came out towards the end of the month, mind you. Yes, yeah, more, yes, uh, episode four, where uh, King Graham grew a beard. Yeah, Sonic Boom, and, Fire and, and Ice came out as well. Yes, it did. There was also the month where a Darkest album. Dungeon came out for PS4 and PS Vita. Yeah. Very cool, actually. Right. Uh, but yeah, that was August. Uh, so, sorry, September. September was not October. a very filled month. The old October. -y. I think uh... October was a lot more. Mm, uh, oh that's... yeah. Uh, no, sorry. No, that's that's Let's not have it. Have a look. Uh, um, um, we got Gears of Mafia War? Three came out. Oh yeah, Gears Mafia Three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
came out and uh, apparently Ooh. sold a lot of copies, but it was also a enough. horribly made game. Yeah. And on the, on the same day, Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location came out. I've been told by don't, those who like that kind of game that it was quite decent. Don't I mean, it's not it's not for me, but I don't think I'm the target audience for this kind of game. Oh, anymore. wait, on the 4th, on the 4th, the console versions for Warhammer End Times Vermintide. Vermintide came out. That's good, you can Very now, fun, you can now yeah. feel motion sick on the consoles, too. <laughs> they released, oh, they man. removed that though. You mm. could now actually play the game, probably. Oh yeah, I played. I played it recently. It's fine, but it's just uh, yeah, when, when the tide released, I think I, I I probably went a funny shade of green. It Ugh. was so funny. We were all playing together, and we're like, "This is really fun." Like 15 minutes <laughs> later, Halloween just goes. I have to. I have to stop playing. <laughs> we're I, like, I had to stop mid mission. And Clegg was like, are "You sure?" And I'm, I'm like, like, "Are you I'm sure?" Like, are you back. okay? And you're like, oh, "I have to." I can't. I never got that game. Uh, it's, is it, it's a it's a fun Left for Dead ish. No, no, not Left for Dead ish. It is Left for Dead. With it rats. is Left for Dead. Yeah, okay, yeah. You literally can replace dead. every single Left for Dead zombie with a rat. Like, yep. Oh look, it's and a the tank, tank rat. With a ogre. It's a rat. Ogre. It's a red ogre <laughs> yeah. tank. There are, there are two things that came out on the eleventh that I think are worthy of mention. Minorly, oh. Gears of War four came out. Oh well, that's yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big game. Yeah. Yeah. It's also big because it is um, the first time that Xbox One and Windows players can actually play with and against each other. No, not true, because Shadowrun came out years ago. Well, yeah, but Shadowrun is like... Yeah. Maybe it's not the first time, then, is it? Yeah, okay, you know, like the first... <laughs> okay, not the first time, but the, in, in ages. The first time in ages. Another thing that came out on the same day was Duke, Duke Nukem 3D yeah. 20th Anniversary Edition World Tour. Yeah, interesting Which that had, was because they actually had, they actually made yeah. new levels in the same style. They did, but um, there are a few uh, quibbles with it. Some of the uh, the sound quality of the um, the sound isn't as good. Oh, really? In that version, Weird. yeah, the the sound is not. And also, they got um, the guy to record some new lines for Duke. And oh, John St. John. They do sound a bit out of place compared to the old ones. Are they higher quality, or is it just he sound older? Um, it's just because, it's just time that's really uh, played there. They may added a new enemy, and there are new levels, and uh, it's a nice touch, I think. I Another think... game that came out on the 11th, which I hope to one day pick up quite cheap for the PS4, is Dragon Quest Builders. Oh yeah, because that looks super cute and just fun. Yeah, I've heard good things. It's basically, kind of like a story-focused Minecraft Dragon Quest yeah, RPG. Yeah, I mean, I, I, really... I've definitely heard good things about that. Everyone has forgotten to build things, and you are the only <laughs> yes. one who can build things. I love things. that. It's it's like, it's so, I, so, um, I have these things, and if you try and put them on top of each other, if you're not this person, they all just fall to bits. It's like, how, how have people survived in this world? Well, now as far forgotten? as I'm aware, it's actually like everything was destroyed, and your guy has a magic building power, so he can actually, you know, like build things really quickly. Basically, plot excuse that you are yeah. the only person that builds things. Also, everything is made out of blocks now. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Everything's made out of blocks. Do you question me? <laughs> Uh, on the 13th, there's a shit ton of PlayStation VR games, yeah, the v but the uh, hiding VR in the middle out, of yeah. that, hiding in the middle of that for Windows is actually Shadow Warrior 2. Never played it. Which I yeah. got gifted and really don't like. <laughs> which is weird because I should love it because it's a it's a like a like a silly super fast like it's basically as fast as Doom. It's like I figured I would love it because it's you know it's like I love Doom so I would love this. It's silly. It's 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 pretty. It's fast. It should be fun. But the problem is they went like, hey guys, you know what we should do with Shadow Warrior? Instead of making it like a normal shooter, we should make it like Borderlands, where you need to pick up like weapons and put runes in them and increase your damage numbers Nothing that come out of bullet game. sponge enemy. Nothing can turn me I off just... a game like someone saying it's like Borderlands. God. I know, that's the thing. Like I literally like you have this massive shotgun and you jump around and you have to unload into this fucking enemy so much before he finally dies. Just because what like your build isn't proper, that's not how the game should be. You should be able to play it like Doom. Yeah, pretty sure. I really didn't like it. I stopped playing it after two hours. I just it was considering just that the original fun. game Shadow Warrior was very much like Doom and was developed by yeah. Three yes. Realms. Yeah, it was. Well, and the the Shadow Warrior remake as well was a really fun over the top shooter where you you know if you hit someone with a shotgun in the face they would die. In yeah. Shadow Warriors two, it's like a damage number comes out and the guy goes, R -r -r -r, I still live because you used the wrong element against me it's like fuck you anyway like a game that i should have loved completely turned me off which with a terrible fucking 
design decision. Let's keep looking down, Mr. Just because I'm getting a bit wary of time for our uh, for our gargantuan podcasting we were on here. Moving on, mm-hmm. I think. The Civ Six came out. As Civ well, Six came on the out. same day as Battlefield One. Battlefield One. I never yeah. played mm-hmm. Battlefield, but I did play Civ Six. Um yeah, I, Battlefield oh. One is just Battlefield. It's Battlefield four with a World War One yeah, skin. Yeah, and Civ Six is Civ. It's but, Civ Six. I mean Civ's great, um as is imagine I imagine Battlefield One. Sorry, yep. bloody cables. Um but I really like Civ Six. Um I haven't seen the dad test yet though. I, I gifted it to him at Christmas, so I have to see what he thinks. I have to know. It's definitely it's definitely a great six, I it think. It is. Uh, Civ Six is great, yeah. Tip. And brilliant new music tip. as well. And the new mechanics for the AI makes it interesting as well, which I Yeah, I, I definitely like some of the gameplay changes that they've made. Uh, I think it's uh, some of the yeah. stuff is definitely a step forward from Civ Five. Oh definitely, definitely. I I, I think they did good with Civ Six. It was it was good. Yep. It's been good fun. Hmm. Dra- um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two, which I, I don't think anyone else but me played. On, yeah, you have that. On yeah. the same Sometimes. day, two other games came out. Uh, the uh, Titanfall Two came out. Oh yeah, and the Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition came out, which dragged many. Oh, more you guys people... are already at the twenty eighth. I thought we were at like the twenty fifth. Okay, yeah, Titanfall Two came out. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was looking at the other Titanfall Again, confused. Yeah, I was that's looking okay, at. Well, we jump I, back yeah. and forth. No, no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. Time travel. I, I'm, I'm just gonna very quickly say. Um, uh, October 25th, World of Final Fantasy came out for PS4, which is a really cute, colorful game full of nostalgia, and it's very, very fun. I need to pick that up at some point, I think. Okay. It's, it's very cute. Very cute. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I've yeah been, I played two. a bit of the Skyrim Special Edition. I'm, I'm planning to play some more of it, in fact. It's uh, very, it's as fun it's as always. Try it's not to make Skyrim a stealthy Skyrim. archer like everyone I, ends up doing. No, I, I told you, I made a stealthy archer because I hadn't played that in ages. Right, right. I hadn't. And the other 12 right. stealthy archers? There's no other well, save Titan files Fall on 2? my PC with any stealthy uh, That's because I, I got Titan rid of all 2? of them. I picked up Titanfall 2. Um, Titanfall 1 didn't really have a campaign. It just had like some story stuff that was kind of like set over multiplayer matches in a way. Titanfall 2 has one of the most fun shooter campaigns that I've played in a couple of years. It is really, really fun. I would say that from the campaign standpoint, it is up there with uh, Doom, Doom. Uh, of this year. Um, uh, it also has great gameplay. Uh, inventive levels and so on. The multiplayer is it's Titanfall. It's fun. You know, you have Titans. You run around on walls. You jump everywhere. It's a much faster Call of Duty, basically. Uh, you also die in like a fraction of a second from and they all fall people over. Hence sneezing. Titanfall. Yes. Um, problem is that the game was kind of boxed in between like Battlefield One and then in the shortly after in the next month, um, Call of Duty. And uh, so not a lot of people bought that. I know it has a healthy community on the consoles. I know that more people have picked it up on PC, but I'm not sure it's a huge community. It's probably something like nine or 10,000 people playing at all times, which is fine. You'll find your games, you'll get in. It's a very fun game. Uh, can definitely recommend it. You can get it super cheap on PC, PC. not on consoles. Uh, there is was... two things I want to mention at the start of November. Is oh, it I Owlboy bet, yeah. First, Owl. Owlboy came out, and Owlboy, Owlboy is really, really fun. I mean, it's 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 a wonderful platformer with a uh, definite focus on solving puzzles and uh, a really nice story too, and a definite um, running theme in it. That's um, the the character, the main character you are, is really good, and I'm really happy to say that they have a mute character who is actually mute, not <laughs> choosing not to speak, just is mute well, like, does he like, actually say dot mm-hmm. dot dot though doesn't say anything oh. you the only time um uh, he expresses himself to uh, his expressions and his posture yeah i, I remember nice. i remember um you were having a lot of fun with that boy it's yeah. an interesting tale for the developer as well it took him a long time to make didn't it It did and it shows it's really really nice yeah and uh, one random thing i would like to say is that the um, the nokia n-gage game xanadu next came out for windows on the third n-gage game Yep, it was released on the end gauge in 2005. Wait, well, Xanadu Next, Xanadu, that's the Xanadu's one that... Uh, Carl's playing, it's, yeah. the, it's the one yeah, Xanadu Xanadu Next. It's by the East people, yeah. Yep, yep that was Carl's released for the end gauge, and then um, it was released in Japan at the same time, but it, for worldwide release, you had to wait another 11 or so years. I was pretty sure they released it in Japan for Windows at the same time, didn't they? They did, yeah, yes, yeah. but worldwide, for most people who uh, didn't get to play who weren't in Japan, it came out this year. Yeah, good old Xanadu. Last I, month. I've always preferred East, like, to, to, uh, to the way I'm looking at Xanadu, but uh, it's I know that my friends are having a good time with that, so... Hmm. And then the next day, 
Infinite Warfare This came year's out. crapped out Call of Duty comes out. The only reason this is even remotely noteworthy is because it came with Call of Duty 4 attached to it. Which which was really, really like, we want to play Call of Duty 4, but you have to buy this which game too. Silly. Uh, I'm still waiting for them to release that separately. I don't think they ever will. Uh, well, then I'll have to make do, <laughs> but still. I think I, people are getting a bit sick I of the... I haven't played the new Call of Duty. I'm, I don't have any interest in it particularly. I think we're getting a bit sick of the in the near future. There's now lots of spacey stuff and... I never thought I'd say this, but man, I wish they'd bring back some World War Two shooters. It's been a yeah. long time since we've had a um, big release World been War Two shooter. It is, yeah. It'd be, that'd have been World at, World at War, I suppose? 2009? I think so, yeah. E yes. Quite a while. Sounds yeah. About, sounds about right. Let's well, see what else we got in November. Yeah. Uh, Dishonored 2 came out. Carl picked that up. I wanted to pick it up because I love Dishonored 1, but then it turns out the game is a horrible, horribly optimized mess on PC. They fix it now, they fix it now don't they? Oh. Uh, it runs better, but it's still not, like, proper uh, good. Shame. I'm owing because I'm looking down an O. O? O? Ah. The 16th. <laughs> Rollercoaster Tycoon World. Oh. Uh, but yes. luckily yeah. saved by the 17th. Planet Coaster. It's funny, because yeah. Planet, Planet Coaster is everything that Rollercoaster Tycoon World should have been. And Rollercoaster Tycoon yeah. World is everything that it should not have been. It's just so a bad. Apparently the only thing that Rollercoaster Tycoon actually kind of does better than Planet Coaster is apparently that their management part is more intricate. That's it. And that's only if you like the management part. If but you don't like people, the management part. How many then, people, you know. like most people just go, all right, we're going to the sandbox, have unlimited money, and just build... Uh, probably a lot of people, yeah, of course. Yeah, but, I mean, there are things. also a lot of people who like to actually manage. Yeah, mm. Relico Second World is, is dreadful. Yeah. There's a lot of videos showing you out there why it's dreadful. It's horrible. And it's Planet horrible. Coaster is amazing, and I've, I've done quite a few videos showing why that's so good as well. Yep, it's... I've done a couple of videos showing my park. It's the very The TLDR is, is it's fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted out of a sequel to Relico yep. Tycoon, really. And it came out in November, and they've already released two big yeah. free updates that have added a tremendous amount. Those, like they just those. added, they just like add, just a couple, like what, like a week ago, they added an actual like winter Christmas theme, yeah, so you can a, now build of, like a, a Christmas with well, park if you want to. And multiple rides have been added and stuff, and all of the rides are really detailed and yeah. intricate and just pretty. All in all, a lot of fun. Like, um, very very good park builder game that we've had like we've had fun making parks and sharing pictures with each other and you know yeah i'll show you yours if you show me mine yeah, <laughs> i'll thing. show you or whatever you. um pokemon came out as well i don't think any of us here have it but a friend of us does. i no, don't have, have it no nope. um kiko's still scarred from the amount of uh, walking back and forth he had to do yeah about <laughs> three thousand or so uh, plus eggs to get a shiny charmander yeah the shinies it was a lot of eggs. I'm surprised that, I'm surprised that word Pokemon doesn't like break you out in a cold sweat these days. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay, <laughs> he says. He take, puts a pill in his mouth. I'm okay. No, I'm, I'm okay. Just shiny, shiny, shiny. Um, well, on the uh, 29th, we had Final Fantasy 15 oh, come Final out. Fantasy 15, yeah. Ah, drive around simulator. I like yeah. Final Fantasy 15. Go make, out with your bros. And make toast. Yes. I've just I like come up a with a lot new of recipe. Or come up with a new recipe. Also, na 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 na. It's so good. I I love Final Fantasy 15. I I spent an awful lot of time with I, it. I I definitely love a lot of things about it. There's some stuff where I can really just scratch my head and go like I don't understand. But then again, this game has been kind of like on and off for ten years. If I'm gonna make so. a complaint about it, the fact the fast travel is slow it irritates the shit out of me. <laughs> the the fact that the loading time so is bad. so long <sighs> that sometimes running somewhere is faster than using the fast really travel is, to go yeah. there is insane. But, you know... I mean, I mean you can literally make a cup of tea between load times, and I don't like tea much. Yeah. And I can make tea yeah. in you're between You're just it. making a cup of tea, and then you stare at it, and you're like... <laughs> you just stare at it, and it goes sour. Now I have done this. I'm stare at this it's tea definitely a fun... Definitely a fun game, and I really Brilliant. like the overworld. I, 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 I think it's very I spent pretty. so much time in the open world, I finally got to the... Uh, I, I'll, so, sort of spoilery for Final Fantasy XV. I'm not going to spoil any plot points, but... Oh, okay. The water city. Yes. So I've gone to the next part, and it's the more linear part. And I finally got there, and it's been like forty hours played so far. I think it's. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. been incredible. And I've in the, even if I don't play any more, I mean, I plan on finishing it, obviously. But it, it's pretty crazy it's when great. you look at your levels yeah. and you're like level fifty like or level whatever, and then you realize that the story mission that you're supposed to do 25. is like level ten. Yeah. Well, or level ten. And then 10 what or you do is you get to that point, and it's like. Why didn't you help us? Now everyone's dead! And everyone then you realize died. this has Mass Effect-style missions. Dead and everyone is died. dead. Oh well. 
I ah. think that's November, and we go into December. I think, which the, is la- this month. I think the most thing, I, the only thing of interest in me in December is uh, Steep. Looking at this. On the second, yes. Yeah. Steep. Same here as well. We picked that up. We've been. Um, we like Steep. You know, we've been skiing, we've been snowboarding. And we're Some sad it's videos. die a horrible death. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll still be able to play it. It's not like we need other people. Until really. Ubisoft turned off the servers, anyway. Yeah, in like a couple of years. Yeah, but Steep, Steep is fun. It's It didn't get the uh, recognition it deserved because everyone seemed to hate it for some bizarre reason, which is a shame. Yeah, it's fun. I don't know. It's weird. It's it just has, it's huge. And we're getting the Alaska, Alaska Mountain soon via yeah, free DLC. Which would be so nice. I like um, it. I, I can be in a squirrel suit. We make challenges. Next... Then, yeah. then for me, uh, sorry, Kiko, you said this. No. You first. Okay. On the third, actually, a day after Steep, my absolute surprise hit of the year came out on PS4. It's a free to play game, Japanese, made by Grasshopper Interact. Or no, made by Gung Ho Studios, but helped by Grasshopper. So, um, Suda51 yeah. helped a little. It's called Let It Die. And Let It Die is a. Dark Soul-ish, dungeon crawler, kinda-ish roguelike, Dead Rising style action game. I think we had, need to add a few more ishes there. Or something. It's it's really hard to explain, but it's an action game. You're supposed to like climb a tower that right now has like 40 floors, but it's going to be expanded to 120. It has absolutely fantastic presentation like it has such a fantastic presentation I'm, I'm not saying like it has amazing graphics but the way it's presented is insane it's just so funny um the music is absolutely fantastic the gameplay is addicting i actually just wanted to try this out and i stopped playing final fantasy 15 and i played let it die for like 30 hours instead it's you free to sleep. play no i didn't sleep it's free to play if you have a PS4, like seriously, if you're listening to this and you have a PS4, download Let It Die and give it a fair chance. It's not an easy game, but it is such a fun game. And he definitely does not get five euros every time. Every time someone signs up, no. he give you no. if he gives you a referral, I get link, ten. Don't accept it. I get ten euros every time. <laughs> but no, it, my surprise hit. Like it's not my game of the year, but I, I'll say this right now: it's my surprise game of the year. All right. Basically, and what was your uh, spot, Kiko? On the 6th, The Last Guardian finally got released. Oh, oh yes. yeah. yeah. PS4. This game has been in development since 2007. Do you know, I'm kind of disappointed about that, because now we can't take the piss anymore. I like that Almost Star Trek. Long- it is no longer vaporware. Yeah. It is now here. It's like that Star Trek gift of Cisco watching the E3 in like 2350 or yes. something. And he's like, what the hell? Where was The Last Guardian? <laughs> Well, uh, it's here now. I I don't think I need to say it either. It's here after the time and I was bored. It's here and you just you go, Oh, it exists now. <laughs> it hmm. is a thing. Well now it's out, I don't really care about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's typically. I wanna give a quick mention to Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, which came out for PC. It is basically if people remember it, um the Commando series. Ah uh, Commandos yes. yeah, one, yeah. two and three, and there was also like Wait, a well, cowboy series. I remember. I remember Commandos. Ooh, it's man. basically Commandos, but you're playing ninjas in Japan instead. It's very well done. I don't own it myself just yet because I don't have the time for it right now, but I'm definitely going to pick it up. It's, it's looks really, really fun. There is one thing I could definitely see, but uh, you played, Mr. Halloween. Is that right on the 20th, by any chance? It might, in fact, be. Yep, Shantae yes. Half Genie oh. Hero. Um, it's a game I um, kickstarted. And it is everything I hoped for. Actually, I was I was pleasantly surprised. It's really really fun. It's a brilliant, uh, brilliant platformer. Lots of interesting like transformations for Shantae. There's optional modes that are on the way. Uh, it was big. It was exciting. I've 100%ed it. It was yeah, it was just fun. I really enjoyed Shantae. Glad I kickstarted it. I was very very impressed. Good job, Wayford. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take us back by a week Gross. because <gasps> uh sorry because on the 13th. The uh, final episode, I didn't talk about this when the first episode came out because uh, I wanted to wait until it's finished. I know what you're talking the about. The fifth and final episode of Batman the Telltale series came out, and I actually um, picked all five of them up in a uh, in the Steam Winter Sale. And I played through it all in the last couple of days, and it is very, very well done, and it gave me like a total thirst for playing Batman stuff again. Um, they got Troy Baker as Batman and Bruce Wayne, which is interesting because I... 
thought that he's supposed to be the Joker, but no, he's Batman in that one. Um, doing a really good job. And I think from the Telltale games, it's my favorite because it has kind of like, well, if you can call it that for a Telltale game, better gameplay than the others. But it still suffers from the whole like Telltale thing where they're like, this is a huge decision. You need to really think about this. It's going to change the entire game. And then you make the decision. And then five minutes later, things happen that make it so that your decision will not matter. Riddler in any way, will shape, remember or form. this. <laughs> they will remember that, but they forgot about it. Yeah, Telltale en engine needs an update as well yeah, at this point. But if you like Batman and Telltale games, this game is like really, really good. Random thing I want to mention here, because we're looking at this page, there are three sections a little afterwards that are rather intriguing. The first one being that there were quite a few video game movies be released oh, this year. Oh, yeah, that's true. There was yeah. Ratchet and Clank, there was Angry Birds, Warcraft came out, uh, the Dead Rising movie. Which and was animated, by the way. And Kingsglaive. Oh, was it? Wait, was it animated? Kingsglaive came out as well. Yeah, that was quite and then, you've, yeah. then you've got Assassin's Creed and New Year here. Holy shit, it was actually Warcraft. Well, I saw Warcraft. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, that was... Yeah, I saw Angry Birds and Warcraft. Yeah, I thought Warcraft was really good. Um, I haven't seen Kings... I haven't seen any of those, actually. Oh, um... I've seen Kingsclave. Kingsclave is... Um, it's good. It's it's definitely pretty to look at. It's a very pretty animated movie. Typically there, are all, there are also a fair few cancelled games. By the way, Angry Birds yeah. really surprised me. I figured it would be total shit, but went it into was... It. Yeah, it was very well written, and the jokes were actually funny. A few cancelled games, but more worryingly, there's a selection of discontinued uh, Dark games. Oh, EverQuest Dark... Next cancelled, though. D yep, Dark... yep, Darkspore went, Dust514, uh, Mag Might and Magic Duel of Champions. Yeah, lots of, lots of things. The original Planet Side was taken offline Pro this year. Project well. Spark is gone. Oh, that didn't last very long, did it? The oh, Mighty Quest for Epic Loot. Also gone, and yeah. Two Tom right. Clancy games, End War Online and uh, Ghost Recon Phantoms. Ghost Recon Phantoms was not a good and game. And I think that uh, is going to be something that over the years is going to become a larger list every year because uh, there will be games that when they are gone are just gone. Yep. Yeah, Noz, and you would... Noz got snuffed, I don't forget as well. Yep. Which no one cared about, probably. <laughs> I was almost about to joke and say, what? Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> Cast him in. Oh! Uh... <laughs> All right, we're getting on to two hours, so we should probably um. Yeah, what, we should what... probably. We'll start with you, Kiko. What would you say your game of the year was? Ooh, admittedly, I played a lot of things like Hearthstone and stuff, but game of the year really got blown away and surprised by King's Quest. Nice. King's yeah. Quest, I wasn't expecting. I I don't know, wasn't what I was expecting, but the fifth chapter almost brought me to tears. Aww. And that's a great sign of a game. And it was very sad. And anyone that's played the other ones, play it. I said, I said that's a pretty uh, good recommendation, right there. Mm-hmm. What about you then, Mr. German? Well, it was a little tough for me because you know, like Doom was really great uh, as a shooter. Like I said, um, I was totally taken by surprise by Let It Die, which came out, which is my, I guess I'm going to say my surprise game of the year. Um, but my official game of the year, like I was gushing over it earlier when I was talking about it, is uh, Total War Warhammer. I did not think that would be like it because, I, like I said, I only ever liked Total War. But um, I really love it. And I'm playing it. I'm playing it every couple of days He's for a couple right of hours now. and so on. I'm playing it right now. I'm literally raiding the Empire with the Orcs. But no, uh, Total War Warhammer is... Uh, is absolutely my game of the year. Nice, nice. Yeah, and I mean, I know how much you. you've been enjoying it. So uh... yeah, like I've been streaming and playing, yeah. and it's just, I don't know, it just works. It's it's fun every single time. I beat it up, uh, beat it up, boot it up. Uh, I also you beat it. Get I, I just and beat just goes, it. I just beat it up. <laughs> Fuck you, game. No. So what about you? Oh, that's easy. for me. This is a bit tricky because I've got, I've got a thought. This tent, I probably can't use this because, but I enjoyed <laughs> The Witcher, Blood and Wine a lot. That did come out it in did, but The Witcher itself came out last year, so I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna well, technically, me. King's Quest, the first episode, came out in 2015. Yeah. So but, we can let that. But I'm not actually gonna pick that. I'm probably. <gasps> I'm pro. I'm actually conflicted. It's either gonna be Stardew Valley for me or Final Fantasy 15. I've enjoyed both both of them an incredibly large two, amount. Two very two very diverging. Yeah, diverging yeah, true. Job. But 
both of which I really, really liked. Um, both of which are fantastic. Uh, I don't know. I I don't think I can really. Pick, I, if I had to pick one, I guess uh, Stardew Valley probably actually. I'd a, I'd a really I had a lot of fun with Stardew Valley. Uh, I like Harvest Moon style games. I like slice of life style games. You know, just that kind and of chill out, out of sort of thing. And two out of the three of us were surprised by the game that we would pick as the game of the year. Weren't expecting it. No, yeah. I wasn't. Uh, not at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but. But it, hey, I, guys, 2017. 2017 seems to be a busy one for like. Th there's a new Tales game coming out for me, which I'm I'm going to enjoy. Yeah, there's Zest a lot of Zestaria stuff coming was last out. Year, wasn't it? I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I'm um, going to be looking at it and going. Um. Well, technically, Berseria is already out, but, but we, we were us, talking, yeah. of course, about the Western Western yeah. version. Hey, maybe they'll release Whale's Voyage on GOG? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. They won't release it. But yeah, 2017, especially the months like January, February, March, are going to be very, very busy. But, like, there's a lot of games I'm looking forward to, but I think what I'm really looking forward to, and we've been talking about this for a couple of days, I'm really looking forward to the new expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. Oh, yeah. Storm Stormblood, because I have a lot of time in that, and it is pretty much my favorite MMO that I jump into every couple of months, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully playing it with you again, too. Yeah, I think I'm, I am looking, also looking forward to that. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably grab it completely forgot to mention Legion as well, didn't I? A bit of my game of the year thing. Ugh, but that doesn't count. Well, that... I mean, we've talked about it. Yeah, but, but I can't count that anyway, because WoW's a 10-year-old game. But It's World of Warcraft. Exactly. It's like, it's really World hard to Warcraft take that. World of Warcraft is a 10-year-old game? I can't tell when I look at the pixels in the Stormwind. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to call a close to this, because we've been yapping for two and a half hours. So, uh, yep. thank you, for, or two hours even. Um, Thank you, both of you, for joining me. It's been fun to do this again. Actually, on time this yeah. time. As always. Yay, yeah. on time! And with that, thank you very much for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to try and put up a... Uh, I don't know why I'm saying this at the end. I'm going to put up a download for the podcasty bit so people can listen to it in the car or whatever, I guess. <laughs> should have been at the car. beginning. Yeah, I should have Watch out, there's a truck! <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening, guys, and thanks for joining me, chaps. So, toodles. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye.